and now, from the bowels of the internet, in the Hate Fist Podcast. The passing of the late great Richard Dawson, the guy who could kiss anybody he wanted. Anyway, the hate and he podcast did. is on the air. I'm your chaos, Alpha Omega Sin, Razor Fist, and Sainted Magnus. Come on down. <laughs> Did we get a washer and dryer for a very low introductory price? After halftime, we'll have bidding on showcase number one and showcase number two. Fuck yeah. I don't know. Those showcase girls aren't as young as they used to be. Mm. No. Oh, well. I'm yeah. pretty sure one of them. They need to cycle those girls out. One of those bitches was Nebuchadnezzar's oh, wife. Dude, how many bitches do you think they could get on a stage with Drew Carey? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> anyway, is this supposed to be an introduction? Because that was horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, because he was, you know, Mr. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> <laughs> Without wasting any time at all, we're going to go into the colostomy bag. And our first piece of mail comes to us from hatebitpodcast at gmail.com. If you have a question or an inquiry of any kind for the Hatebit Podcast, please drop us a line at hatebitpodcast at gmail.com. Our first piece comes from Zaster25. And he says, my question is for all of you. What genres of black metal do you all listen to? And what are your favorite bands? I'll tell you who I don't listen to. Zastor. (laughs) <laughs> they really suck. I'm not even. I'm not even kidding. They really do blow dick. Uh, but revenge? <laughs> no, that uh, I've met that guy. Uh, what's his name? Malefic, the what main is... guy. Main yeah. guy from Zastor. He he talks so fucking much about killing himself. I really wish he just had a little more gumption and follow through. Quite frankly, <laughs> you should you should give him some dissection albums. Maybe that might help. Yeah, maybe give him you some see? tips. Yeah, well, it'd be like the Time Life book on how to kill yourself and still remain metal. Yeah, yeah. Let me give you one of Bob Vila's how to reinforce your ceiling fan how-to guides. But anyways, um, forget Glenn Benton from DSI claimed he was going to kill himself, and well, he's still kind of traipsing around. God <laughs> damn it! Uh, so black metal. Uh, for me, I I like first wave black metal. I like Bathory, Venom. Sodom, uh, Celtic Frost, that kind of that kind of shit. Merciful, not merciful. Well, Merciful Fate isn't really black metal, but you know, Merciful there's, there's... Fate is proto black metal. Yeah, I don't know, of... man. I think Merciful Fate is like pseudo black metal, to be honest. That's yeah, they kind of they kind of mixed thrash with the darker lyrics, but I don't know. King Diamond's vocals never struck me as very black metal. <clears throat> he has like the gruntier stuff. True, but you know he's he's more of a classic. Yeah, that was before black metal really became anything. Yeah, it's true. But I, a lot of people didn't know where to categorize Merciful Fate when they came out. They're like, the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> what and do? Then, then more recently in the history of black metal, people have started to go back to that style. Thank Christ, because the 90s just shat all over black metal. <laughs> <laughs> With the Norwegian crap, but like Inquisition, they're this band originally from South America. They moved to Washington, so they're an American black metal band now. They freaking they sound like an early Bathory album and uh, uh, bands like that are, or the Finnish bands that are coming out right now, like Horna and Sargeist, although some of those guys are from the 90s. Uh, they're they play that old style of black metal. But anyway, that's me. They've so, probably saw the air of the way, so they're trying to repent. Yes. Finland, man. Finland. Even though Finland is that shitty plastic village you put under your Christmas tree every year. Yes. <laughs> they, make, they make some pretty good black metal. That's if I they ever bothered to put metal Christmas in tree Finland, up. Period. <laughs> they really do. It's, it's amazing to me that, that Finland, if, for those of you who don't know, there's a documentary out there called <clears throat> The Promised Land of Heavy Metal. And yeah. it, is a, uh, it is sort of a tour documentary of uh, a summertime jaunt in Finland. And you find out that Heavy metal is part of the mainstream in Finland, which yeah. I find very interesting. It is, actually. Yeah, and, and I, I love that. It's, it's, uh, it's always been interesting to me about how heavy it, metal it is this thing. Hmm? Yeah. I love it, but it makes me depressed because here well, it's like metal. <laughs> LOL. Yeah, what? But, well, the word Americans, and Americans are, what's the word? Retarded. Yes. Um, uh, now, 
See, there you go. That's coming from a fucking Brit. A Brits are talking shit about Americans. You know things must not be going well. What? Anyway. Because uh, it takes so much to get them to hate Americans <laughs> normally. <laughs> really, but it's, it's fabulous, no, you're, though. That's... You're, you're talking about the uh, political agendas that uh, our presidents and prime ministers have. <laughs> Anyway, things are fabulous in Finland, you know. I mean, heavy metal is part of the mainstream. Anyway, if you want to talk about black metal, though, I'm going to actually throw in Merciful Fate as a black metal band. Why? Because they're fucking awesome, and I think that Venom is kind of overrated. Oh, you're insane. Hey, Venom's... you, you stop that, because that's actually my top pick. I didn't mean early. Venom, Venom is amazing, and they are not... They are, if anything, they're underrated. I mean, it's before... Crazy. Before Venom, there was no death metal. Across their entire career, or are you just cherry-picking? No, Venom, yeah, and uh, yeah, they have some great records, like, later in their career, like, uh, uh, Calm Before the Storm and Temples of Ice. Well, and... let's be honest, the 90s were not good for Venom. <laughs> and, uh, the, the newer stuff, actually, I like hey, metal. glossing over something obvious here. What's that? Wouldn't you say that uh, the 90s were not kind to Venom? No, man, Primeval was from... Well, actually, Primeval was 89, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was just... It was 1989. Because don't forget, oh. most of the 90s was Kronos and uh, two or three young guys. No, no, wait, think... Razor Fist, didn't you mention... Uh, uh, was it Temple of Ice? Temples of Ice is 91. Yeah, that's that's oh, yeah. in the 90s. That's a good record, actually. <laughs> sounds like I'm wrong again. It, yes. it does sound that way. It sounds distinctly that way. I don't know, man. All the albums from them that I like were, you know, they were they were pre '90s. But you know, uh, Welcome to Hell and Black Metal, obviously, those are like the two that most people recognize them for, and also Possessed. Yay! I get it. Like to say that I love, you know, I love the Swedish style of uh, of black metal. Oh Not yeah. I hate me, but I love Dark Funeral and a spinoff of Dark Funeral band called Infernal Six Six Six. Or uh, uh, the Cithereal is another one from Sweden. Is Cithereal really from Sweden? Yeah, they're awesome. Oh, okay, here, here's a quick question. Uh, out of you three, do any of you like Immortal at all? No. Immortal, immortal was the best thing that ever happened in Norway. They're freaking awesome. See, because that's, that's the about, thing. I like them. Yeah, the thing that's great about Immortal is they understand that black metal originates from rock and roll and heavy metal. They didn't forget the metal part of black metal. So they they kind they of reference how that. most how most uh, Burzum sounds like really 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 slow punk rock. Ugh, Burzum. Oh, Burzum and here uh, there, uh, there's one thing about Immortal that everybody should like, and that's their fucking music videos. Their crab walk, dude. <laughs> the crab walk. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, the best part, man. You got it. You some there's some songs, especially Immortal, and all their they've got at least a few videos that look very similar, and it's all just you know playing in the snow, dancing <laughs> in the snow. I'm near a tree, dancing in the snow. You know whatever. <laughs> Everything is trees and snow. Wait a minute. That, that, that sounds like, like a Christmas cat. Carol. <laughs> yeah, I think Dark Throne wrote that song from one of their more recent albums, Hiking Metal Punks. I think <laughs> I think they wrote that based on Immortal. They had to. Have. <laughs> they must just I, hike around and dance in the snow. That's, that's I would like it. to think there was somebody off camera holding a shirt because <laughs> you know they're just out in the fucking in the the yeah. in the mountains, just, just trees and snow and shit, and yeah. they're dressed like demolition. Yeah, just doing the just doing the crab walk in a hand <laughs> solo vest. Don't worry about it. You know, <laughs> no shirt under. <laughs> <laughs> Immortal gave us one of Black Metal's finest records, Sons of Northern Darkness. That is an amazing album. Yeah. And I know it gets a lot of praise, but I will, you know, praise it even further. It's it's a marvelous album. And uh, you know, what I love about that album is you could put that album on in the hottest day of the summer and that album makes you feel cold. <laughs> <laughs> that and uh, Battles in the North. And uh, I, I really liked uh, Damned in Black. That's my favorite. Damned in Black record. doesn't get the uh, the appreciation it deserves. Yeah, it's really good. But anyway, so we should we should let. I'm hmm? sorry, we we should let Alpha to tell us what the fuck his thing is. Yeah, uh, tell us about Immortal. You wanted to talk about Immortal. Well, Earson, it wasn't just Immortal. I mean, literally, my top pick was Venom. Uh, until you were like, they're overrated. But no, Venom. Venom for me is top pick. There, I, I have oh, to yeah. actually like attribute my brother to the reason why I like Venom so much is because he was a really big fan of it. And when I was younger, I I didn't quite grasp like how fucking amazing they were. 
and you know as time progressed and my taste in music matured and i really started understanding like all the fucking awesome bands that were out there i was like holy shit these dudes are beyond being fucking pioneers they deserve way more credit and it pissed me off because lots of times i would bring it up and people are just like oh never heard of them and i'm just like what and you know these are people that are like oh yeah i miss i listen nothing yeah. but metal and i'm like but but Venom, why? I, I don't I don't understand. And it kills me more because a lot of times people are bringing up and they're like, yeah, they're death metal. I'm like, oh, oh, oh no, don't don't say no, that. And then they're like, I'm like, what, what's black metal then? They're like Cradle of Filth. And I'm like, we're done here. This conversation's over. Because you, you pretty <laughs> Cradle of Filth were black metal for all of about 27 minutes back in 1993. Yeah. Dude, here's the thing. And this is the, if there's anybody who likes Cradle of Filth, look, I'm not taking a shit on the band, okay? But what I'm saying is that Listen to uh, what black metal was like a long time ago. I'm talking like the 80s, all right? It, then listen to Cradle Filth. It's two different fucking genres, frankly, yeah. okay? That's and, all there is to it. And when I think of black metal, that's what I think of is that era. And yeah. it just, it blows my fucking mind. You know, that shit, it sounded fucking raw. It was evil as fuck sounding music. And it was brutal as shit. All the other stuff that people are putting out, it's like overly overly done up in the fucking studio man it was just like completely different i i feel bad because i do sound like i'm i'm stampeding all over like other people's bands and shit but i'm just saying that that's that's black metal to me that's what it fucking sounds like so yeah venom fucking top pick they're the shit always will be the end yeah they're and that's and one of the big things that really pisses me off is when people say, well, Venom invented the name black metal, but they didn't invent black metal, the music. And it's like, you are you are full of shit. They had tremolo picking. They had blast beats in songs. Yep. They had the guttural vocals. They had the lyrics about Satan. Hell, their song titles and even sometimes line for line lyrics were ripped off by Bathory. Um, and he and then he lied and said he'd never heard <coughs> of Venom before he made his band, which is I mean, I love Bathory, but you're full of crap, man. Oh, that's because they want to try to be attributed towards being real original. Yeah, he's like. Also, don't forget how the Nor how the Scandinavians feel about the English. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that too. That too. F and uh, yeah, if they could only get. It's not along, my fault, man. And if they could only get along, maybe the Swedish could share their rapid advancements in the field of dentistry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> If it's not PlayStation, it's my fucking heritage. You want to be Mexican. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, hey, hey. Just because you were in America 1.0. <laughs> you know, that whole conquest and domination thing. Oh, well. So what about what about Sainted? Do you even listen to black metal? I don't even know. Oh, I've only just uh, opened up the uh, depths of black metal. Uh, I've had people suggest a few bands to me, one of them being Gorgoroth, which I'm actually quite enjoying. So, yeah. And... Gorgoroth is cool, provided you don't read the fucking interviews. Yeah, and <laughs> so, somebody suggested to me Demi Borgia, and I was listening to them the other day, and I was like, yep, this ain't too bad. Yeah. Well, it depends well, on what era on what era of Demu you listen to. Their first album in, in bad, their first several albums aren't too bad, but they got a little overproduced as they went on. Did you guys ever listen to Old Man's Child, which is kind of like their offspring? Well, it's, yeah. I, I never bothered. Don't ever say that. That's terrible. I was gonna <laughs> say, man, that that I I had checked out, and I was just like, eh. <laughs> but but I mean, the first two uh, Gorgoroth records, uh, Pentagram and Antichrist, man, they're some of my favorite black metal records, and the newest one, or I don't know, unless they've released one since twenty two thousand nine, when they're the last one I'm aware of was Quantos Possunt Ad Satanitatum Trotant. That's a that's another thing. All their freaking album titles are in Latin. That ridiculous. sounds like some sort of sandwich. I know. It sounds like I'm speaking Entish, but whatever. <laughs> sounds like you're speaking in tongues. <laughs> oh, and, and one thing, if anybody's wondering why, out of the, the four of us, why Razor Fist is most vocal about this, th this is by far, barred none, his favorite fucking genre. Yeah, so right. he's like balls deep in the fucking genre and loves the shit out of it. So if there's somebody you want to ask about the shit, and the man knows his fucking stuff about it. So, uh, yeah, take his word for it. He's a man? Uh, um, uh, it depends, depends on his uh, wardrobe pick for the day, I guess. Yeah, unless, unless it's not the uh, dress with uh, frilly turnips, it's all right. With peacock feathers? Oh, yeah, don't forget the peacock feathers. That, that, hey, you, got, you gotta be fabulous. Super! Super <laughs> fabulous. 
Or you could just, All right. Or you could just go and was, camp and what? gold dust for a week. You're going to go camp and gold dust? He, what happened? I, I said he should go pseudo camp and become gold dust. Hey, man, gold dust is all man. He is. All He's all yes. <laughs> oh, man. A real man's man. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's what, William Regal what there. <laughs> what else is in the mailbox anyway? Because I've not checked it for a uh, That was actually all we had for this week. Because uh, we just spent three months. Well, we just spent three months talking about black metal, you know. Oh. <laughs> anyway, if you have a question for the uh, mailbag, send us the two hatebitpodcast at gmail.com. Also, look for us at uh, facebook.com slash hatebitpodcast. You can find a link below. Anyway, going on to our first item, Sainted got a PS Vita. Sainted, how'd you get a PS Vita? I got it. When, well, my mobile phone was due for upgrade, so... We have a company over here called Carphone Warehouse, and they offer free stuff when you take out a contract. So I thought, fuck it, I'll take, see what they got for offer. Well, they had big screen TVs, they had laptops, they had uh, Xboxes, and I, I didn't want any of them. I thought, fuck it, I'll just get the PlayStation Vita considering it's free. So I got that, and <laughs> overall, overall, I am impressed. It, it is a... <laughs> Can I fucking finish before you start? You and uh... two other people. Oh, shut <laughs> Yeah, one being you and one being uh, yeah, because I think Razor Fist is a secret Sony fanboy, but that's that's another topic for another day. If <laughs> let me finish what I'm trying to say. Overall, I am actually impressed. He's also a communist. Yes, he is a oh. communist. Right. Anyway. Oh no, he's jumping in. That's good. Anyway, the no. <laughs> no. Overall, I am impressed. It's it's the hardware is impressive. What it can do is impressive. But the fact of the matter is, is that the pricing, you know, if you're going to go out and spend real money on this thing, it's wrong. The game's £40. The system for the Wi-Fi model is about 220 quid near enough. And let's not talk about the memory cards. Oh, the know. memory card, the memory cards are fucking unreasonable, unreasonably fucking priced. Insane. They should, they should be bundled with the console for that fucking price. You ever want a nice belly laugh? Just take a look at some Sony PS Vita memory card prices. Oh, that God. That is ridiculous. Well, let, let's put it this way, right? To get a decent size, what would you say? About 16 gig is a decent size? 60 pounds. Yeah. And and, and the said and the thing that really put the cherry on top of that turd smoothie was basically that they, when when they were pressed by their audience about the price and stuff, they were like, well, it's proprietary because... And and here's the good part, guys. Here's the here's the part that justifies why we're doing this. Uh, it's gonna stop piracy for us, <laughs> which, which is like saying, yeah, but on the plus side, we're gonna be okay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> now, but speaking of uh, bundling the uh, PlayStation Vita memory cards in with the Vita, uh, we mentioned last week about the uh, Assassin's Creed Three Liberation bundle that they were going to release with the white PlayStation Vita, 4 gig memory card in the game. Well, actually, they've released a price point for it. $250 for the Wi-Fi only model. Hmm. So does that, does that indicate, does that actually indicate a price drop, or does that indicate that they are desperate to try and get rid of them? Thought? If they're desperate to try and get rid of them, they'd move them down to one sixty nine ninety nine, like the 3DS. Yeah, but... Yeah. I did a comparison video uh, this past week. Yeah, I'm doing some shameless plugging this week. Uh, I did That's a compar- what this show is for, duh. Yeah, I did I did a comparison video of uh, the, both the 3DS and the PS Vita and, the, you know, what games you got for it, the choices, the packaging, everything like that, everything that was relevant. And the 3DS came up on top, but it's all a question of taste because they are virtually the same fucking console underneath. You know, yeah, they've, you've got the 3D model on the uh, 3DS and it's Nintendo and all that shit. But at the end of the day, it's just a handheld system that can surf the internet. Well, here's here's one thing I want to ask, because I'm sure there's probably quite a few people that are listening right now. They're kind of wondering, since you've got the Vita, what have you been playing on it? And, you know, I'd like I'd, I'm not even asking sarcastically, like, but what are you playing on it? Are you enjoying it? And et cetera, et cetera. Uh, well, I played I played through Uncharted this week and the the Golden Abyss game. It's actually not that bad. Uh, as for um, as for the second game I got was uh, Wipeout 2048, but I got that because I'm a Wipeout fan. I've always I was going to say I heard that one was really really good. Oh, it's really good, and you've got you. 
you know, contrary to the popular belief that you get forced to use the touch controls on certain games or you get forced to use the tilt controls, it's not as bad as you, as you think. Uh, See, the the only thing for the touch controls that I thought looked weird, when you brought up uh, Uncharted Golden Abyss, I noticed that they had this one feature. I don't know if it's something that's absolutely mandatory, if you can just do it manually like you normally do, but when uh, Nathan Drake is hanging from a ledge, if you want him to, you know, shimmy along all the areas that he's supposed to, you just kind of glide your finger across it, then he just does it automatically. Yeah, I always the, thought that was kind of forced and stupid. It, it's not forced. You, you've got the options to play it like the traditional Uncharted games that you found on the PS3. The only things oh. that the the only things that are actually mandatory are like, uh, say, if you you're doing like a you know like a ch- charcoal rubbing of a certain thing in the game, which actually adds to the whole collectibles thing because they've got absolutely hundreds of different collectibles that you can do like the cave the the rubbings that I mentioned, you can find specific treasures like you do in the proper games. So yeah. the, there is actually unique ways of using the touch panels. Now, the, there was one feature I actually liked where, the, say, if you, there's one part where you pick up this helmet and it's all covered in crap and you're trying to find out where this, uh, where this helmet comes from. So you use the back panel to move it around and then you use the front touch screen to... Uh, you know, you rub your finger along the uh, item to reveal what's underneath. And you use that a fair few times in the game. The quick time events, now these, there is quick time events, but they're very, very lackless, you know, they're very lackly used. So they're not as, you know, like most people think, oh, it's only, it's all quick time events. Actually, they're all, there's they're only like a couple of sweeps across the screen. But the two main bosses in it, they do actually have, that quick time event and it does get a bit fucking boring because it's got like a a three strike rule and you're out sort of idea but other than that it's it's not too bad overall the games the story to it is good the it it is like playing uncharted one you know even with the uh comedy eyes the eyes look like they've got no life in them whatsoever but other than that it's a it's a good game and i look forward to uh hopefully seeing some more entries into the uncharted series where they're not absolutely fucking ransacking us like they did with assassin's creed but so far are you actually like enjoying having the handheld i enjoy having the handheld uh you know transferring the uh media you know like music and films and pictures to the ps vita isn't as much of a chore as what people are thinking all you do is you download a a program called content management or whatever it's fucking called connect up the vita to the to the pc and it all transfers through the you know everything you want on the vita you transfer from the you know using the vita to transfer the files from your pc to the vita so it's not too bad it is a simple it's a bit simpler than the way i've explained it but We'll see. At the very least, somebody. Well, there you go, everybody. There's somebody who has a Vita and is actually happy with it. So yeah, there is many there's other. Hope. Oh, they're exciting. <laughs> there, there is happy Vita owners, but I'm. I must admit, I'm not as happy owning a 3DS than I am with a Vita. I, I think the Vita is a better system in some respects. But you, it's only four months old, and you got to give it a chance to release. It will be out a year before you can give a firm judgment of the system. Well, I don't really think anyone can give it any sort of judgment until they put out some fucking oh. games for it. Are, are you? Are, do you hold every system to that standard? Because if we did, then the PS3 would have been a failure. Well, the PS3 <laughs> has not had proper <laughs> games saying. for a few years. But look at look at the 360. The 360 was riddled full of reliability problems. Yeah. I've never had to replace my 360. Well, that my PS3 have never got replaced. That doesn't have anything actually. to do with games, is what I'm saying, though. No, but in terms of games as well, half the games I've had from the PS3 have not actually been as bad as what people yeah, say. Yeah, but Sean, what what I think what Razor Fist is trying to communicate is that time is not on anyone's side right now. Yeah, exactly. These guys need to be coming out of the gate hard and hot and ready to hard go. Hard and time, throbbing. That's right. Yeah. Hard and throbbing. <laughs> Both at the same time. Because time is short. As you can see, these companies are losing money faster than... <laughs> Then, uh, I don't know. Give me something fancy there, Razor Fist. Uh, faster than, I don't know. What, what the fuck? Faster than David uh, Jaffe can actually make an assumption. I, I, don't, know. I don't know. Faster faster than Dan Aykroyd toward a buffet. I don't know. <laughs> you say faster, and I immediately think that Ingve song, Faster Than the Speed of Light. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got. Faster Yngwie than Ingve Malmsteen. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I understand what you're trying the to say. Is... They all have to have the balls to the wall and get it fucking right first time around. 
Well, Nintendo... well, it's not so much about getting it right. It's more about just plain getting it. I don't know. Because we got this fancy hardware that's not doing anything. No, you're exactly right there. You see, you know, and time is short, especially for Sony. Sony is hemorrhaging money. So is Xbox. So is Nintendo. They're all hemorrhaging money. Everybody yeah, has no, money. No, Nintendo, dude, Nintendo and Microsoft are not hemorrhaging money like Sony is. Sony just laid off 10,000 people. That's a lot of fucking 10, people. 10,000? I didn't hear about that. I mean, that is a lot of fucking people. For I mean, that keep in mind, that's company-wide. But uh-huh. it's still a lot of people. Well, if that's company-wide, yeah. they've got Sony Computer Entertainment. They've got Sony Mu- Music. They've got fucking yeah, Sony, the other Sony Computer Entertainment, their video game branch of it. Whenever they brought out those figures, that was the one thing that really is is keeping their head above water for the most part. They're losing a lot of money, mostly due in part to their electronics, like TVs and shit. Mm. That's yeah, where they, they were taking to, like the biggest hits. They had to sell their entire TV division to Samsung. So, I mean, that's... Yeah, there are no more Sony TVs. I mean, I look at it like this. Right now, Wait, if go Sony's going to do anything right, drop the fucking price and just nab up some exclusives just so that they can stand out. And for the love of fucking God, why can't they just link up the PS3 and the Vita so that you can get the fucking games to work correctly like they offered, like they, it was supposed to happen? If they can just get that shit happening, you know, get their shit together, period. People will be pretty damn pleased the to go buy one immediately. Well, the better question is, why hasn't someone walked into the offices of the PlayStation division and say, hey, you know you're supposed to be fucking selling these things, right? <laughs> Because that's what it seems like. They just kind of put them on the store shelves and, hey, we made something. I... <laughs> we'll see you later. Well, I, I mean, I, I talked about it at length after that uh, New York Times article came out where the lady who used to work at Sony was uh, was talking about it. Anyways, but it, it's basically because of internal disputes. It's one, one division of Sony doesn't know what the other is doing, and some of them are actively competing against each other instead of working together, basically. It's lack of communication. But yeah. But in, instead of slamming Sony anymore about the fact that I've bought a Vita, maybe maybe we should just give it the chance that it, it needs to get some well, games. Yeah, I understand it's that. F- We're gonna give it a chance. It's old. It's four months fucking old, and the the systems had what had forty games released for it since. You got well. You didn't look at it this way. Look at the Nintendo. We are, we are giving it a chance. You, me, Razor Fist, Alpha Megason. We can afford to give it a chance. But they don't need our dollars. They need the dollars of the masses. Yeah. That's and the only... That time is... They're running out of time. The hourglass is almost empty. You're out of touch. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think anyway, that we we're, uh, we talked about uh, the bundle pricing on the PS Vita. What was that going to be again? Say to Magnus. Two forty nine ninety nine. Well, $250. Two forty nine ninety nine. My goodness. But... 299 US dollars. Two hundred ninety. Two forty nine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, the, the, It'll be seven dollars before you know it. Yeah, but it's it's going to be a white PlayStation V2, which actually doesn't look as bad as what people would think. Hey, I, I hope they do well, but you know, I think that uh, somebody needs to get really realistic really quickly. But um, no, no, we we will look for it. We'll bring you more coverage as uh, you know the PS Vita debacle unfolds. But uh, we need to talk right now about uh, overall console pricing and the opportunity that Nintendo had for the Wii U. Uh, at least, oh, a million bajillion times in the last two weeks. And um, they have not taken advantage of, you know, telling the masses how much this thing is going to cost and whether... Because people are planning their holiday budget right around summertime because yeah. times are tough and money's got to go in the right places. And I don't think that Nintendo knows they're supposed to be selling this thing either. What, can I get some thoughts here? Because I'm 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 confused. Well, my thought is when as soon as I hear money needs to go in the right places, <clears throat> color me perverted, but I think a hooker's g-string. Yeah. Anyways, so but no, I. Hey, and that's part of your holiday budget too. Here you go, Miss. <laughs> but here you go. Uh, what's your name? Man, you know, there you go, Bill. Here you go, Misty. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Crystal. Aren't they all named? <laughs> they all are named Misty, aren't they? I think their name is Champagne. <laughs> that's a that's a hooker name. That in America, yeah, there it's better go. than Boofa Shop. <laughs> Jennifer seems to be a pretty big one too. <laughs> I'm sorry, we've gotten off topic again. Yes. Oh no, but anyway, what, what do you what do you think, Razor Fist? What do you think about this console pricing debacle? 
circumstances. I, I, I do agree, but I think it's a greater problem than that. I really, I think it's primarily a problem of they haven't given us a reason to get one, no matter what the price is. Really, no. they they still haven't. They still haven't adequately hyped it up yet. No, I mean all they've really told us is that it's it's Facebook and that and that's and apparently you're going to be interrupted during mm-hmm. gameplay by I mean, some asshole who thinks he knows better than you. Yeah, and. Uh, <sighs> And I hate to uh, harp on on Sony, but Sony, I think <laughs> you I fucking think love it, agree. really. You no, no, fucking no. I, love and it. I think I think we can all agree, and this is not a shot at them. I think we can all agree <laughs> the 2006 E3 press conference for Sony is pretty much the low water mark, right? For for press conferences, no matter how bad they are, they could never be as bad as 2006 E3 for Sony. Oh, I remember watching so, that. I was a tear came to my but, eye when I saw that price point. But but say this for them. They did have games to show, and they did have a reason for you to buy one if you're a Sony fanboy and you're willing to shell out that much money. Nintendo didn't do that. No. <laughs> there is no reason to buy a Wii U yet. No, there is no reason. I've, I've, you know, I've had this conversation a lot over the last couple of weeks. There is no reason for this p- unit to fucking exist. <laughs> None. No, None. There, there's no reason for this one. There's no reason for a PlayStation 4, and there's no... Okay, the Xbox 360 could use a little help, but that's aside from the point. Um, there is no reason for this machine to exist. The, the, it is not doing anything that a Wii, you know, updated, you know, firmware-wise, could not pull off. It's this fucking tablet controller that's designed to, I think it's designed to attract the iPad fans. But the iPad fans, I don't know if you know this, Reggie and you cats over at Nintendo, but they already have iPads! They don't need another one! It's true. They have they have iPads and uh, how much are iPads anyways? Four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars. Yes. Yeah. Stop. People shell out that much money because there's an Apple name on it and it makes them feel like a smug, superior hipster. But oh, there's no the fact that there's a chance that it can upgrade and do whatever it is they ask of it. This yeah. will simply play Mario and Zelda. Here's the thing, even if we are ignoring the iPad audience, I mean, tablets in general are very affordable. You can get a really nice tablet for like 300 bones. And it also is a computer, not this complex yeah. shit that they Nintendo got, They have ones that computer. are being prepped for uh, Windows 8 being installed on them directly. This reminds me of like a web TV version of Facebook. Did you ever handle a web TV? Didn't you feel like a total fucking retard handling a web TV? Like, what the fuck is... Oh. People, you're surprised that people can't figure out how to use a basic computer interface. That's exactly what the Wii U looks like. It looks like a fucking web TV version of Facebook. There, I said it. It is. <laughs> no, you're completely right, though. You know, I mean, I, I was so excited for it, but at this point, it's like, it doesn't really do anything. It's... Yeah. It's like it's like those guys. It's like the guys that put the they put the the muffler on their Japanese import car and it goes. <laughs> it doesn't do anything, but they insist on doing it anyway. It just lets people know down the block that you're coming. <laughs> it's called. Yeah. They call it. Well, they call it an active exhaust. Yeah. Fucking active. Go, active ex- <laughs> Dude, the thing is, at the end of the day, after the system is out for its entire lifespan. And the system dies off, and the next generation after that is going to come into play. The thing is, everybody looks back on their consoles, respectively, and remembers the games. They don't give two goddamn diddly shits about the motherfucking hardware. They don't give a fuck what features that it was capable of boasting, because years later, it's outdated, and no one gives a fuck about it. But the games will always live on as something that you can tie into it and relate to it. You know, and if they're not going to showcase the games and look, if anybody's going to fucking tell me right now, well, maybe they're saving them. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Just shut your goddamn stupid fucking mouth. Yeah, they're waiting There's for the nobody that is saving their fucking games for something outside of E3 whenever you have investors staring you down the fucking throat. OK, they're de- they're literally counting the minutes down of your hour-long presentation and just like the minute this shit ends if they don't show us a whole bunch of triple a titles they're gonna fly off fucking shelves and everybody's fucking dicks are going to instantly become hard including the fucking soccer moms okay if they're not showing that shit off sorry this thing's a flop guess what their stock dropped you know why because Pikmin 3 was their only triple a title and that's not a really good sign whenever you're launching in oh i don't know a couple months well, on what are you top of the talking fact about man, Pikmin Three is a killer app, bro. 
Well, on top of the fact that that E3 had total, real-time, full-scale reporting. You and me and all of us, we're everybody, the entire gaming journalism thing all the way across the world, all eyes were there. And all any of the fucking investors really had to do was halfway through the conference, look on their fucking phone at, uh, you know, at Kotaku or whatever, and they know immediately no one cares. Because, yeah. let's face it, the average investor doesn't know jack shit about what is and is not a triple-A game title. My biggest problem with the Wii U is I look at the Wii U and the, you know, the features and the controller, and I say, you know what? I'll bet that thing can do a lot. I'll bet it can do a whole bunch. I'll bet that's capable of doing all kinds of shit that I can't even imagine. But the fact that what thing that stands in my way is it doesn't do anything. <laughs> what it can yeah. do has nothing to do with what it's actually doing. Let's, for instance, for instance... You you could you could try and you know uh, start your car with a spoon, yeah. you know even though that's wrong. But the key is a much better idea. Yeah, and I think that well, analogy that, that is, is kind of a terrible that, analogy. That, that is, is a terrible word. analogy. Everyone <laughs> pretend you didn't hear me use that. Hor I'm not using that analogy ever again. Well, <laughs> well let, let's put it this way, right? It's like um, Nintendo. They wanted to reinvent the fucking controller. And what did they give us? A fucking remote control with a fucking stupid string that comes out of it with a, another thing that looks like you fucking dolloped out your ass. Jesus. Yeah. Now, what's wrong with a controller? You know, well, it's, yeah, it's, it's an innovative Sony thing. to learn that as well. What's wrong with a controller? Well, it's, an, it, it's an innovative thing. You have to realize that the original, and, you know, the original controller for the NES, that was fucking high-tech shit. That had never been done before. No one understood that. It, what, what, do you, what do you need two buttons for? Two buttons, this is ridiculous. And this thing, where's the joystick? Yeah, it's really dangerous because they. it's a very thin line between the success of something like the Wii and the failure of something like, uh, you guys remember that thing that was released for the Sega? Uh, I think it was released for the Sega Genesis back in the day, or maybe the Saturn. You mean the 32X? Uh, where... It, it motion it, it detected your um, Sega, Sega activator oh, that was the activator yes that the ring you stood in and you could yeah. fight in fighting games it did not work it never no, worked no, no, no. Not in the here's the thing you know what's going to happen with the wii u and this is a, a fucking truth the tablet controller it, it is an innovative piece of technology it's not going to see the fullest potential out of any third-party developer they are going to tack on useless stupid bullshit gimmicky fucking things just I don't to think appease Nintendo. This thing. And it's going to happen just like it did with the Wii. You know, okay, you got a controller that's capable of doing something that other controllers couldn't. And you want to know what ended up happening? Half ass bullshit, left and right, everywhere. And that's what's going to be annoying about it. And third party developers can be like, eh, that's just too much. I think we'll just go elsewhere. No, that's exactly mm -hmm. right. I mean, I, I'm not saying this to be a downer. I'm not saying this to be Mr. Negativity. And I'm not a fucking Nintendo hater at all. I've been looking forward to Nintendo Wii U. But I'm being realistic about the situation and just judging it based off of, well, you know, history. Well, and, and think about the, what all the tension leading up to the E3 presentation. You could not buy that kind of publicity. People were foaming, saying, well, what the fuck can this thing actually do? And there was all this tension. I know I felt a tension. And it's like, this is exciting. And this is, you know, because new when, hard, when new hardware comes out, that's exciting. And yeah. you say, oh, it's going to be great. And then it turned out to be a whole bunch of nothing. Nothing. Zippo. Nothing. It was Zippo, nothing, nada. It had all the excitement of an insurance convention. It was an insurance convention. Well, here's the thing. The okay. If, if they are <laughs> going to bring this out, okay, what, what price point could they bring this up to literally get it into your homes right now? Like, literally, you three. Two ninety nine American. Razor but... price. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? what? What price point would this have to come out at for you to pick it up? Assuming that it has a bevy of games that you are, in fact, interested in. Oh, it would. I mean... The highest I'd be willing to go is 300 to 350. That's that's as high as I'd be willing to go because that's you know when the when the Xbox first came out when the PS3 finally started selling they had dropped down to about that range. It's that's that's the only reasonable price point for a larger you know triple A console. It seems like the magic number it. though. So, yeah, I, I totally agree with that it's about 299 because it it seems to be the magic number for selling consoles. You know, look mm -hmm. at, look at the PlayStation and Saturn when that released. The Saturn was four hundred dollars. The PlayStation was two two hundred ninety nine dollars. So, you, you you can see the difference. You know, it, 
consoles sell at that decent oh, yeah, price despite point. inflation. Despite inflation, but you can understand where I'm coming from with the point. Well, sure. You know, it, it seems to be that magic number where things sell. Well, yeah, it's kind of like when you get something done to your car. It's like, oh, it's going to be 300 bucks. Like, you know, that doesn't sound too bad. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, not I, good, but it's, uh, I, you know what, I could, yeah, yeah, I could live with 300 Yeah, that seems okay. It's a reasonable price point. That, no, you know, that 400 people kind of sounds fuck. like way the fuck out there. Like, oh, fuck that noise, man. Well, I wait, I wait for the PS3 to drop in price before I thought about well, buying it and, anyway. And, and should have. Plus, plus I was still playing on my PS2 up until 2008, so. Oh, yeah, well, I, I, I use PlayStation 2 myself. But, um... Anyway, yeah, I'm just disappointed, and uh, what's with the pricing, man? These guys, they, I don't know. It's a mess. Oh, it is a, it is a mess, and the thing is, when we were talking about the Vita earlier, that right there is a prime example of how pricing can really hurt you. And mm. look at the 3DS. The 3DS wasn't selling for a fuck at all, oh. and the Ambassador program was to make up for the fact that they fucked up on the pricing. It's a handheld. Nobody's going to chuck out a bunch of cash for a handheld, and that's just how it is. Ram those. Like, hey, you know, you spent a whole bunch of money, and we just dropped the price. Well, guess what we're going to give you? Nothing! <laughs> we're going to give you pictures of something we made 25 years ago. Here you go, motherfucker. <laughs> Yo, you get that, uh, what? It was a slap in the mouth with Satoru Iwata's dick. That's what, what we need. Was. What we need is a whale oil USB lamp. Dishonored. Dishonored. Give us we, a whale oil USB lamp, and it will ameliorate the entire problem. No, no they need to send like twenty pounds of whale bacon. <laughs> whale bacon. <laughs> they, ha they have the bacon in Japan, strips you know, and the bacon the strips. The only place you can get it, as far as I understand. Yeah. Don't forget yes. the bacon strips. Anyway, and, and well, you know what? We're not going to give the Wii U any more consideration oh, until we sir, get some whale no, we bacon not. here. I want, I want a, an original Mario title for it. I mean, original I as in... Original whale bacon. Yes. Want it original. Don't want a fucking Mario... Uh, Super, new Super Mario Brothers Wii with uh, social networking on it. Because that's all it is, is this new one. And yeah, continuing from last week, Nintendo, you're in fucking trouble. Moving on. There was a leaked trailer for Leaf Thief... Oh shit. Thief. Thief. <laughs> Leaf. And uh, Leaf... Sweet Leaf! Uh, anyway, uh, Razor Fist was foaming yet again about Thief 4. What's going on over there, Razor Fist? Well, uh, it sounds like... Well, first off, you, you have to kind of set the stage here. It was not a leaked trailer. It was leaked segments, a very, very brief, all of 30 seconds in length, uh, from a trailer that was supposed to be released, apparently, in December of 2011 which would have been great, would have been the sweet spot for releasing a trailer about Thief 4. I mean, they, it's been three years since they announced this game. We've still got jack and shit from this. This is the first anything substantial, aside from some leaked storyboards a few months back, that we've seen. And uh, basically, they were released by... Uh, they, they were put in this like video collage for a guy who did the lighting in the trailer for Gold Tooth, a cutscene company that also did the cutscenes for Deus Ex Human Revolution, those butt fucking ugly cutscenes, um, unfortunately. Because it's weird, like, the cutscenes in Deus Ex Human Revolution are actually uglier than the in game engine. That's true. But <clears throat> anyway, so Triple uh, uh, Thief 4, rather, basically got this little leaked trailer, and it looks fantastic. Uh, it, it looks absolutely amazing, but it makes you wonder why they decided to sit on the trailer instead of actually releasing it. And now people are opining that maybe the development's in trouble. Maybe they've hit a snag. Maybe they had to restructure because people have left, although not it's not as dramatic a situation as Kotaku decided to paint it out as for the purposes of ad revenue and generating false controversy. Uh, people have left the development. Up to three to four people left over, but it was over the course of a two-year period, which is what Kotaku does not tell you. Uh, but it's they it, people are now guessing that maybe it might be in trouble, and it's possible that it is. But anyways, it, either way, this trailer looks freaking amazing, and I want this game now. Yes, yeah, we were kind of bullshitting about it the other night when we saw it. it was like, oh, I have to have I that know. game, and the Ugh. I have to point out the fold-away bow. That yeah, fold away this... bow looks kick-ass. I don't give a shit what, what, what it actually does. It just looks fucking awesome. 
It's like, a, for those who don't know, Thief <laughs> kind of takes place in a steampunk sort of Victorian uh, medieval kind of mixture world. Yeah. And so having steampunk technology like a fold-away composite bow does not completely outside the realm of possibility. But that's just freaking rad looking. And it makes more sense than having to lug around an actual friggin' longbow. Oh, yeah. So, while you're jumping through fucking windows and shit. Oh, yes. And hopefully they'll give us a sword again, though, instead of a short sword like they did last time. I like, you know, I like the dagger. It's more thiefy to me, but that's just that's just me. Anyways, guys, any anybody else see the Thief 4 trailer? Have any thoughts? I honestly haven't seen it. I just know of the game's existence and have been excited to see it, but... Yeah, I didn't see the trailer, unfortunately. What a failure. I know. Yes. I tried. Yell, and Yell Chaos didn't because it doesn't have an obese plumber in it. <laughs> yeah, nor nor did it have some, you know, Martian Manhunter's tits in it, so. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have uh, Miyamoto as the executive producer. No, of course not, man. You know what a fucker. No, I, di- I actually didn't see it um, because I don't watch Machinima. <laughs> Well, I just imagine where that shit comes from, you know. Um, anyway, so, yeah, I don't have anything else to say, but if you guys don't mind, I think it's time for a video game circle jerk. What do you think? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Video oh, yeah. game circle jerk, that fabulous segment where we talk about jerking off in video games. And uh, this, uh, if I didn't mention it already, this uh, segment sponsored by Jergens. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget your been said, said, since his name starts with an A, we're going A to Z. Alpha Omega Sin, what you been playing? Uh, recently, <laughs> and I was what? talking about this earlier because it it's literally just kind of funny. There's a survival horror game on the Wii called The Calling, and uh, its name derives from the fact that you're getting called on cell phones all the time and it's just named regular after, fucking uh, house phones. Is it by any chance named after a Leather Wolf song? Uh, no, no. It, it, though I think that would make the game a little, little more amusing. But uh, oh, that sucks. I, I picked this up for this sheer fact. It, you know, survival horror junkie have to have them all, even if they're bad. So I decided to go on a whim and say fuck it. Picked it up because I found it for the right price, and. I mean, it's one of those games, I just, I trudged through the bullshit fucking control, because it's trash, it really is, it's just, it's terrible, the graphics are horrible on it, it's like first generation PlayStation 2 graphics, they're really bad, terrible voice acting, but I actually like terrible voice acting, as a matter of fact, me and Yo Chaos were talking about, terrible voice acting is usually a really good thing when it's really hokey. It's amazing. Watch it, some of the Castlevania you, games. You, Dude, yes. You <laughs> Die, be- monster, you don't belong in this world. Yeah, you you almost became a Jill sandwich. <laughs> oh, it just oozes with greatness. As a matter of fact, if anybody wants to play something that has terrible, terrible voice acting to the point that it's a fucking comedy, get Countdown Vampires for PS1. You'll thank me later. Anyhow, um, beyond the calling, uh, I was actually playing a whole bunch of games last night. I ended up playing, uh, was it, Ground Zero for Sega CD. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, Ground yeah. Zero, Texas? Yes. Uh, okay. I shit you not, because me, my friend Gordon came down and he was like, "Why don't we try doing let's plays and shit?" Because he has a capture card and all the other fun stuff. So I was like, "Fuck it, yeah, let's let's do this." Well, it's a blind one, and blind means that you know it's a first time through. I'd never played Ground Zero before, and it's it's a lot like Night Trap, which I have played Night Trap, except for Night Trap's a lot more amusing than this game. Um, basically, it sucks every phallic member. Um, but it, it's funny, so at, at the very least, it gets a nod for humor. Uh, beyond that, what else was I playing? Uh, Cyborg Justice was another one. Uh, that's a neat little beat em up. If anybody, have you guys heard of that at all? It's on Sega. I've heard of it. I've never experienced. It. I mean, it's it's not it's not horrible, but it's not great either. I just like the fact that you can uh, take robot body parts and put them on and get new moves and shit. I thought that was kind of innovative. Um, but oh yeah, and, uh, the major game that I've been playing the most is Lollipop Chainsaw. I I pre-ordered it, got it, and uh, yeah, I've been playing that. It I mean it's it's really good. I like it. I know it hasn't got the most spectacular reviews, but none of Suda 51's games have gone spectacular reviews whatsoever, and I enjoyed the shit out of all of them. So yeah, Lollipop Chainsaw gets a thumbs up for me. Everybody kept on asking me, "What do you think of it?" Because they saw the cardboard cutout in some of my videos. But uh, yeah, I like the game. It's it's fun. So yeah, that's everything I've been playing. Besides a skin flute. <laughs> <laughs> Razor fist. Oh, that's right. We're in alphabetical order, aren't we? <laughs> um, I've been rocking some. Actually, just recently completed 
Sniper Elite V2, which is really, really a great game. It's a little on the buggy side with the actual stealth mechanics, but so much fun. And the levels are just really well designed. It's really fun to just snipe people from a gajillion miles away and factor in like wind and, you know, bullet drift and all this other stuff. It's really cool. It's like a actual sim in a way, which is you know, sim type of games have definitely gone the way of the Great White Buffalo. But um, the other one I was playing, well, I've been playing through all the Deus Ex games, uh, recently completed all three um, <coughs> in order to do the Deus Ex retrospective that I'm going to be doing here. Shameless and plug. And enjoying the, yep, shameless plug. And what else? I, I, think I, I think that's more or less oh yeah that's right I've been playing through and this is just like a sports game so fuck your noise uh, I've been playing through MLB 2K12 which is it's kind of a shame that series is apparently evidently going to be going away from what I understand How come? but yeah I, I like baseball why is it going away because uh, 2K isn't making enough money off of it or something. They're, they're saying they were losing money off of it, so which really sucks because now the only baseball game you can play is exclusive to PS3. Is that that MLB which, The Show thing? Yeah, which sucks, man. I mean, MLB The Show is an okay series, although the last two games have been a little below par as far as MLB The Show goes. But um, they're it's kind of sad because the 2k series is kind of headed up in terms of quality and the show series, at least if we're judging by the last two games kind of heading down the other side of the mountain. So it really kind of blows that now there's number one, there's not a baseball title on Xbox 360. That fucking sucks. If you're a fan, you're going to have to buy a PlayStation three now to play MLB the show. I already, I, I already have access to a PS three mind Freund. Yeah. But, but is it yours? <laughs> well, why would I? Why would I waste money on that piece of shit when I have because, access? Because to secretly, it. you're you you like the PlayStation Three and you respect it for the power that it's got. <laughs> the power that's inside. Yeah, the power, the graphing calculator, RAM it's got. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, so. <laughs> anyway. But no, anyway, but that that really sucks. So that's what I, what I've been playing through, and uh, fuck you. So you okay? <laughs> Sainted Magnus, what you been playing? Oh, right, where do I start? Right, recently I've played through the Crisis games, Crisis 1 and Crisis 2 on the PlayStation 3. Uh, I don't like the direct port from the PC version of Crisis 1. It, I think it was a bit of a letdown. But Crisis 2, I'd never actually played and finished it all the way through, and I actually enjoyed it. The, there is some good parts to it, the story is a bit eh, and... The action is a bit hold your hand, go this way sort of thing. Not like the vast open world environments that you get in the first game, which I miss. I think I think that was a sad turn of events. Uh, on to PlayStation 2, I was playing the first Max Payne game. Again, I prefer the, PS2, uh, the PC version to the PS2 version. Uh, Xbox, been working my way through Thief Deadly Shadows, really enjoying that game. Yeah. Hey, we got fuck yeah, that's a, that's a good good turn of events. Back to Sony, on the, recently I got a Vita and I've been playing and finished uh, Uncharted Golden Abyss, and overall I enjoyed the game. Uh, next month I'm looking at actually... Finishing off Final Fantasy 4 because I've not, I've put it down for a bit because I got to a point where I was like, I was playing it every day and it got a bit monotonous, so I'm going to be picking that up again very, very soon. And something's coming in the mail very, very soon, which is going to be very, very special, so I'll give you an update on that next next time we do the Circle Jerk. Uh, I, forgot well, very, one, very I forgot one game, if you don't mind if I interject, just one game. I forgot, it's Venetica. It's like a open world kind of fantasy game. It's not super well known. It's not it's so kind of popular. You mean? I, 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 not I, I know popular. the game. It's a. It's a. It's actually surprisingly good. Uh, it's kind of. It's kind of like uh, Elder Scrolls and Fable, fucked Legacy of Cain Soul Reaver, basically. 
because you have the uh, your character can go between the world of the living and the world of the dead at will, just like Raziel from uh, Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. Oh yes, and that <clears throat> and that whole mechanic is used to you know solve puzzles and to get around different conflicts and whatever. And it's actually really cool. It's got some interesting things going on. Graphics are a little eh, although the environments are gorgeous. Uh, and the gameplay kind of fable-ish, I guess. Although they've got this cool combo system. But anyways, it, it's a pretty good game, and I've been enjoying it, actually. So, really yeah. small-budget PC title from 06, and it was only brought over to the 360 in 2011, I think, as a port. So, anyways, but that, that's what I've been doing. Anyways, Yell Chaos. Take it away, sir. Oh, man, that sucks that I come at the end. I really should have looked into this better, but, uh, you know, mine's... It's been really boring, actually, on this side. I've been playing on the PlayStation 3... <gasps> uh, Sonic Generations, which I'm having a real good time with. That game looks really good. Um, and uh, it's actually pretty easy to pick up and play, which I was very happy about. Uh, what else? Let me see. Working on... Uh, I'm actually going through New Super Mario Brothers on the DS one more time before... I'm still fighting with myself on whether I want to get New Super Mario Brothers 2 for the 3DS because... Uh, fuck, there's too many coins. Anyway, and no, I'm no, also no, no. Uh, running you forgot, through... You forgot one bit there. What's that? All the gold. And all the gold and the bling, excuse me. All the... <laughs> gold. So, anybody else got hard nipples, Marlena style? Anyone? Hello? Oh, yeah! Cold and, front moving through. <laughs> and I've, I've been going through uh, pl um, PlayStation. Metal Slug 7 on the Nintendo DS one more time. I just love that game very much. And that's it for the video game Circle Jerk. So if you have any... Hmm? Uh, sorry, I, every time I hear Metal Slug, I have to say, heavy machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> Rocket launcher. Rocket launcher. Rocket launcher. chair. <laughs> I love how the when you you know free the um, oh shit what do you call them hobos hippies you, you mean, you mean the POWs definitely hobos and hippies yeah one of them's got the the horror you or whatever thing I like what? how, I like oh, how when yeah. they I remember that <laughs> you ever seen that yeah I like yeah. how when they walk yeah. off a cliff they start the flapping their arms like they're a bird they start flapping their arms. <laughs> Anyway, that brings us to halftime. Halftime where we're going to look at the mailbag one more time. You said it was and... empty. Huh? You said it was empty. For the first half? Calm down, motherfucker. He's, uh, got, he's got plenty of ammunition oh, in his sack. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, um, before we move to the mailbag, uh, I want to point out something that happened on the Facebook podcast here, for, or the Hate Podcast Facebook page, where Joseph McAleff says, just found out that Reginald Reggie fils is going to be on Jimmy Fallon tonight, and I guess this was a couple of nights ago. And uh, the man himself, the Rageaholic Razor Fist, said, I hope they have an Olympic powerlifting team handy to hoist his ballooning ass onto the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I that, forgot that, I said that. I, I I just wanted to I just wanted to bring that up anyway. <laughs> so um, let me see right. here. Yeah, uh, a few different pieces of mail, and uh, if you uh, if you got a question for the Hate Bit Podcast, please drop us a line at hatebitpodcast at gmail dot com. You really should. You really should. It, it's good for you. Um. Oh, and by the okay. way, no mind, no mindless self promotion on the Hate Bit Podcast pages because we'll kick your ass with a fucking pair of hockey boots. Yeah, and you know who you are. Yeah, we're the only ones who can do shameless plugs, yeah. motherfucker. In other words, if you come from Texas, oh, self promotion on our Facebook page. We appreciate that. Thank you. Anyway, you got to self promote us on your website now. I beg your pardon? No, they've got to self-promote us on their websites now. Yeah, that's a great that's a great idea. Yeah, Pro be feel free to promote the Hate Bit Podcast on your website because, you know, bitches love the Hate Bit Podcast, yo. Fucking it's man. true. That is true. It's because of all the testosterone. Yes. Well, we've seen we've seen they all they think we're all sexy, right? On the on the Hate Bit uh, poll we had we took the application. Who who put that in there? <laughs> um Sorry, I was a bit drunk on Friday. I got bored, so I thought, <laughs> fuck it. Oh, it's so <laughs> I thought it was Yell Chaos. I thought I, you did I, it. Did you vote for yourself or did you vote for all of us? Oh, man. 
I, I like the fact that Razor Fist actually voted for all of us instead of himself. I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> well, that was was awesome. He was trying to be. He was trying to be. I don't know what he was trying to be, but it was fabulous anyway. But maybe he grew bored of masturbation. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Think of that. But you know, I mean, you know, what happen. makes me laugh though is the fact that everybody that were voting on that they were all fucking butt guys. So that kind of begs the question. <laughs> Are we are we actually that sexy to homosexuals, Razor Fist? Yes. <laughs> See? And he was, so, you know, I, all... I think to all, all homosexual males, they're going to find me the least attractive because I have all that fucking facial hair, man. Shit ain't going to go down. I'm too beardy. No, they, there's a whole contingent. They like the bear contingent, man. They, mm -hmm. the, the bears, they love the facial hair. Oh well, well, fuck, lumberjacks and whatnot. And you're gonna have much uh, rougher yeah, sex than myself or sainted. <laughs> <laughs> the grisly sex. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. <sighs> you know, men like. Oh yeah, and we're supposed to be answering mail. Hello. Oh, yeah, we, we we seem to be answering fucking posts on bloody Facebook. Eric, mail. Go on. Go on. Let's let's get some mail on the show. What what mail have we got? Oh, Bagwell. Uh, <laughs> go on, get, anyway, get your hand in uh, here, dirty colostomy bag and uh, tell us what oh, else you got. Well, we got one right here coming from Dark Vega. And Dark Vega says, hey, guys, I was hoping that you guys would talk about the belly flop that was Ninja Gaiden 3 in your next podcast. Also, do you guys think that DOA 5 is heading the same direction since Itagaki left Tecmo or whatever the fuck is called now? Love the podcast, but not as much as I love tits, but close. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know what? I say thank you to that because if you love us, like you know, second place to tits, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, well, I'm, at least he's got his priorities. I like guess more than they like hmm. tits. Big, big, plump Marlena titties. That's right. By the way, ladies, if you've got great big plump Marlena titties, please feel free to shoot them over to us at hatebitpodcast at gmail dot com. Not physically. Like if we if we have some Angry Bird style tits just come bombarding our homes and everything, there's gonna. I don't have insurance, frankly, so I can't. <laughs> I don't need silicone bun bags just coming through my fucking window and no, no, no. possibly shoot, shoot. annihilating my cat. Shoot us a JPEG at hatebitpodcast at gmail.com. No, P and if you're a PNG, a then we can actually feature them on the videos. <laughs> yeah, and if you're a man with great big titties, we'll feature those on our page, and we'll tell everyone who it is, and you'll get all kinds of fame. You'll be a famous man in no time flat. So, anyway, um, what did we think about Ninja Gaiden 3? Never played it, though, in, though interested. I'm a Ninja Gaiden fan, and to be honest, I played the demo and didn't like the demo, so if I'm not going to like the demo, I'm not going to like the full retail release. I've I've heard really bad things, but I can't really opine one way or another. I, I've, I've heard the game is pretty bad, but... Mm. Asked, but I'm not really... I am. went into the game from Gamefly, because I was excited about it. Like, I have been with pretty much all Ninja Gaiden games, because I've loved the series forever, and really wish that they would someday port the arcade game. But anyway... Uh, Ninja Gaiden 3, it just, it wasn't the worst thing ever. If anybody tells you it's like an absolute fucking train, it's not a train wreck, but you know, you hold it up to a certain standard. It didn't meet that standard at all. It seemed like it was just trying too hard and failed and was drunk. So yeah. The best one was Ninja Gaiden Black on the Xbox. My that opinion. was a fantastic game. Absolutely fucking fantastic. It was one of the only few reboots that actually worked. I'm looking at you, Devil uh, May Cry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so that that that's my opinion i don't know so none of you actually played ninja gaiden 3 like the actual like full game outside the demo i did not you know i after seeing <clears throat> and look i'm just not a big ninja gaiden fan to begin with i thought ninja gaiden 2 was a little over the top and i just didn't really dig it yeah and plus plus i play a game about a ninja i don't really expect to be just constantly slicing shit in half i expect to be hiding in shadows and doing tenchu type shit but that's just me oh tenchu i love tenchu oh tenchu's mm. amazing I, I wish that series would come back hold on here i, I want to throw this out there and i don't give a fuck somebody's like stay on topic fuck your mouth look 
Tattoo <laughs> Stealth Assassins on PS1 has one of the greatest goddamn things in any motherfucking game. Their oh, debug yeah. menu. Okay, it's a little code <laughs> oh, you put in. Yeah. The debug mode in Tenchu 1. Even if you said the game's graphics aren't nice, shut the fuck up. If you said that the gameplay isn't great, again, just shut the fuck up. Play the Just play it for the debug mode. You literally can just craft your own game. And it's, yeah. a, it, it's fucking Metal Gear Solid with ninjas, man. Is it yeah. perfect? Far from it, but it's fucking fun, and that's all that counts. And the voice acting is abysmal, and definitely it worth a good couple of chuckles. So yeah. Oh man, and Tenshu, Tenshu never gets the credit it's due oh, for no. being an originator of the stealth genre. You you have to remember, Thief the Dark Project, Metal Gear Solid, and Tenshu all came out in the same year, and Tenshu came out first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was before both of them, so that, yep. that's pretty. Uh, what, what's kind of crazy as to one did you ever play the one that came out on Wii I did not no. I shit you not it's good well, it, the that's, one, that's what fucking flabbergasted me I was like you're kidding me and I was well, like one, wow the one everybody, under the radar the one everybody seems to hate uh, Tenchu Z I own it and I fully endorse it I think it's fantastic who made it uh, who makes it now because uh, I knew it was Activision at first because oh, uh, it's uh, what, tech, Tecmo? I know Sega's had it at one point. Hold on, hold on a second. I actually own it. Let me grab this fucking box. Yeah, grab that fucking box. <laughs> yeah, grab the box. Yeah, grab that box. Grab the box and grab your crotches. Pull on it, pull on it. Don't don't twist. Stuff the muff box. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I like to do that getting the getting the change out of the coin machine move. Anyways. Shake it. Um... <laughs> <laughs> It is. It's from software. <laughs> so same guys who do Armored Core. Oh, Those are oh, oh, that, that, Hold on. Is, is everybody just ignoring the fact that Razor Fist has has indulged with ladies ladies of the night, where he inserted uh, two fingers and then was just pulling out quarters and shit. <laughs> 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 it is a front lateral <laughs> scoop. <laughs> this is rough. Uh, actually, that makes me think about that episode of South Park. Uh, was it uh that fucking that little workout device that looks like they're jacking off and everything? What was it? The shake weight, mm -hmm. and then uh, after, after the lady gets done using it, it dispenses change. It's like here you are, <laughs> sleep <laughs> mode. <laughs> anyways, Sorry. Tenchu Tenchu Z. Getting back to the subject a little bit. Sorry. Tenchu, Tenchu Z is a great game, uh, and it also happens to be 360 exclusive. Sainted. No, yeah, no. Just. I have played it. It's a good game. I like the Tenchu series. I'm just fucking. I really like it because you you get to customize your main character and your ally, and it it's just a really interesting game. Can get a little repetitive because you there's like I don't know seven maps in the whole game, and they kind of repeat them and just start you out at a different area. Yeah. But it's still pretty good, and they and they they do throw some variables in there for you. So it it's an interesting game. But yeah. Anyways. Definitely. And even though we we were talking about Ninja, we're talking about Ninja, Ninja Gaiden Gai 3 and everything, yeah. but the fact is, how about this? We'll ignore all the shortcomings in Ninja Gaiden 3 and talk up the living shit on Tenchu because it deserves yes. more love. Seriously, hug it, caress it, put it to bed, read it a bedtime story, and make sure it goes to school and gets an education. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I want to see Tenchu Stealth Assassins in the next fucking lot of pickup videos that people have got. You know yeah. what? It, seriously, and if anybody's got Tenchu <coughs> love, seriously, you should fucking comment about it. Whatever your favorite Tenchu game is, unless you absolutely despise it, then uh, you, you can share that too. Whatever. Yeah. But still. Fuck. And we, we tell them like fuck the off. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. And 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 this is another thing. There's a possibility in the future that the Assassin's Creed series will go to feudal Japan, which at that point, to me, will it not have become Tenchu? Yeah. Just. Or maybe, I don't maybe know. I actually... need to be able to like slide along the fucking walls and look around corners and shit. Yeah. I also that... need the sweet ass fucking uh, the little slingshot, whatever the fuck they called that thing. I always called it the Batman. <laughs> you could just aim at something and then fly across the stage. I was like, fuck yeah. Dun, 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 dun. You have to fight with a 
fucking blowgun in Tenchu. A blowgun! Yeah. That's freaking awesome. It, dude, they had real ninja shit. That's one of the reasons why the game was so awesome, is you literally felt like a ninja. Sure, whenever you jumped through the air, it felt like you were underwater, and you were just doing front <laughs> flips through it. But who the fuck cares? It doesn't matter. You're, you're a fucking ninja. And they had blood, and you could fucking decapitate. You could take limbs off and shit. That's fucking awesome. Well, you, you, you didn't know Japan, Japan is on the moon, dude. You didn't know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 wait, just... I did forget. Uh, I, I do apologize, my my ignorance. And just before you, uh, bef- before every bloody jackass fucking comments that it's, uh, oh, Ninja Gaiden's got flailing limbs and you can cut bits off and shit like that. We already fucking know we're talking about Tenchu, not Ninja yeah, Gaiden. Yeah, um, well, here's the thing. This was on PS1, and, and during the PS1 era, they were, like, very anti-gore everything yeah. during that era. So to see a game just come out and be like, we're just going to take limbs off and blood's just shooting everywhere. That was cool back then. Still like, is very, now. Very fucking awesome. Still is now for 32-bit graphics. Yeah, and here's the thing. It's like little pixelated square blood shooting out everywhere. So it's fucking lovely, man. It just, it seriously, I'm smiling so much right now. You have no idea. I got my, my copies of Tenchu behind me. I'm all like, yeah, fucking rocks. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so anyway, that, that answers your question. <laughs> Yeah, we 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 all we all think uh, well the one of us that have actually played it thinks it sucks, but we love we all love the Tenchu series I, I except for Yo Chaos who's actually been fucking silent for the fucking past ten minutes. Yeah, and what the fuck of it? Do you not like Tenchu? <laughs> I just no, I'm he, indifferent to it. You're indifferent He's... to it. Have you actually played the PS1 game yet? Hmm, a, a long time ago. In a galaxy far far away. In a galaxy far, far, on the moon, in, in fact. I was in Japan. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. It was on the moon. <laughs> yeah, you have, anyway. you have to buy it. You have to buy it. If it's not in your next, I know, I know. If it's not your next yeah. pickup video, I'll come over there and beat you with a fucking Right, stick. right, right. That's why I'm not doing pickup videos anymore, just because you threatened me, you motherfucker. You will do a pickup video. If you don't, we'll beat you up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what, you're going to get anyway. crossed a line, Sainted. You crossed a line. Yeah, I know, man. You know, I, I, got, I got a bitch slap coming all the way, all the way across the ocean for you. Oh, really? <laughs> With my penis. Anyway. FedEx in it. Um, wait, wait. It, I, you know what? Wouldn't it be great if you could, like, hire FedEx to beat people up for you? <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if some guy just, like, you know, like, jumps out of the truck with a FedEx uniform and a wrench? <laughs> no. It's... And you think he's bringing you the wrench, but the truth is he's bringing you the wrench. Yeah. Dude, I, I just imagine, like, he brings a box up, and then he proceeds to open it as you're signing for it. <laughs> Naturally, you look inside, you're, and you see nothing. You look up, and he just sucker punches you. <laughs> and be like, that's from no, so-and-so. No, no, so. Then he no, just no, runs no, away. No, whoop, 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 whoop. No, don't they can make sorry a for your package soap, first. Box, inside's a can of whoop-ass. 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 <laughs> whoop in his house. What is this? Whoop in his candy ass. Yeah. We are so fucking far off topic. They're gonna have oh, to cut the oh, switchback oh, trails man. to find us. Yes. Then anyway, one back. more message. We must bag. have some more in the Hate Bit Podcast bag. Yeah. I'm gonna jump back into the female bag using the uh, coins out of the change machines. You have to have a pretty pudgy, pudgy vagina to make that happen. But either way, yeah. you know. <laughs> hey, you know, you know. It's anyway. Oh yeah. Well, those girls like that tend to play quarters. Yes, they do. The uh, next piece comes from the Dynasty Star, and Dynasty Star says, if you could see two characters fight to the death, who would you choose? Now, me, personally, I'd say Jesus and Santa Claus. <laughs> I, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming he means uh, computer game characters. I was happy with Jesus. Well, they were both in video games at one point or another, I assure you. <laughs> there were not there were enough fucking Bible games. Come on. See? Okay. More like if not, problem. then... This is Webster. <laughs> uh, I would like to see uh, Hope from Final Fantasy 13 and Eris from Final Fantasy 7 just because I'd like to see them both dead. <laughs> so if they had a fight to the death, we all win. Dude, I was so hoping. When you said Hope, I was like, please say Duke Nukem or something. <laughs> <laughs> just say somebody like overpowered. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alpha Megasin, what say you? Um, hold on, I'm still reeling from the idea of Hope getting stomped by Duke Nukem. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like that, oh man, that, that, now I want that as my pick, but I can't choose that. Uh, I don't know, not because I, I hate either of them. I'll actually use Duke Nukem and uh, Serious Sam. <laughs> I'll have them go with. <laughs> I want them both to fight. 
No, we'll go I, to I'm pretty thing. sure Serious Sam is like his nephew or some shit, but it doesn't matter. I just want to see them go and, and uh, duke it out. Oh, <laughs> oh. Puns Fuck. ahoy. Hold on. I take my vote back. I take my vote back. Garrett oh. from Thief versus Altair from Assassin's Creed 1. That would be pretty, oh. pretty fucking cool. I think I think Altair would get stomped. I think he'd be missing. Like he he'd go to throw a knife and they'd all be gone and his Wait. pants would be gone. Okay, you know what? Here, if you can take it back, I can take mine back too. This is my legitimate pick. I want emo Dante versus real Dante from Devil May Cry. <laughs> ah. Tuck, tuck okay, if we're gonna talk about stompings, I'm pretty sure that his asshole is gonna become a pair of fucking galoshes by the time Dante's done, you know, with emo Dante. So there, that's my pick. He's gonna that's wear not... him like a hat. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. So yeah, that's my legitimate pick. Hmm. Although I still contend that both Dantes are emo Dante. Uh, you know what? That, see, that's absolutely fine because to a certain degree, yes, but. <laughs> One definitely has, like, those pretty dick-sucking lips, and the other one is like, I totally get bitches, and I'm not from a big sucky fucking company, so yeah. hooray for me. <laughs> oh, and my game's actually competent, except for part two, but we act like that doesn't exist. Moving forward. <laughs> Saints and Magnus, who's going to fight to the death? Who's going to fight to the death? Oh, let's see. Two fictional characters, so it could be like, you know, Razor Fist versus Snoopy. <laughs> I don't know, Razor Fist versus me in a Sony V Xbox match. I don't know. Uh actually well, why would I've, you do I've, that? I've, actually I've got well, I've got a good well, one. That's good that's actually a good match, because if you think about it, which system is more fucking huge, the original Xbox or the PS3? <laughs> They're both so freaking massive. Well, actually, I, 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 I take the Philips CDI because yeah. everyone knows the Philips CDI is as big as a city block. <laughs> I was about to say the CDI. Anyway, we could, go and, we could all have helicopters and land them on the CDI. <laughs> we, have to to we, we could put the hate pit copters on there. <laughs> we we need one. They have a, they have the fucking death copter from fucking Metal Ox. We need the hate pit copter. Wait, uh, they have the hate copter. Isn't that a song? The hater copter. I have the hate mobile. <laughs> the you have the hate mobile, and 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 Razor Fist has the hate cycle. Yes. And yeah. what have you and got? Then I have the grief cycle. Okay. Well, you know what? Fuck it. I want the hate tank. The hate tank. <laughs> <laughs> That's my pick for a vehicle. I want the hate pack. You know, just a you know, I hate shit and I can fly around. That's just give me a good <laughs> idea. The hate pack. Hmm. Hey, yeah, yeah, no, now get out your get out your sketching brushes and yes. you know, do it night. Nice. Right. Well, hey. my my actual legitimate answer though that was just a bit of a parody, but this is my legitimate answer. Nomad out of Crisis One, with all the fucking nano suit technology bits, versus the Master Chief out of Halo. Imagine that. <laughs> That sounds incredibly linear. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. No, the, no but... It... They'll fight in a brown factory filled with dust. <laughs> no, think, think of it this way. No, they'll fight in a box. Let, 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 me, explain my, <laughs> let me explain my answer. Because if you think about it, right, the, the nano suit, you put the nano suit on, you are an augmented soldier. Basically, a normal soldier underneath with this augmented suit on top. The Master Chief is actually a genetically modified fucking soldier with an enhanced fucking armor suit that makes him weigh about two and a half tons. So think think of that. That battle could be fucking epic. It will make he's... body slams impossible anyway. If he's two and a half tons, how the hell does he jump so high? That's what I want to know. Because he's got a Rocket super suit. Sir. He's got a super suit. With... That's like the super, super, super suit. That's like Lex Luthor type shit. Yeah, exactly. Now just imagine that fight. That fight will be awesome. You know, take take notes, uh, screw attack. Do do something like that. Yeah, a little death battle. Yeah, a bit of a death battle instead of using a fucking My Little Pony versus Starscream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Doom Guy versus Master Chief. Well, this all all boils down to Mr. Chaos now. So, who are your picks for fictional video? I game already characters? voted for Jesus and Santa Claus. Oh, come on, you need video game characters. <laughs> come on. Oh, yeah, you have all to. Right, well, you, you have to. You have think. I really want to see just beat the piss and shit out of each other, just to death with rocks, right? Go on. One of the Cheetah Men. <laughs> Which one? Versus, versus Pikachu. 
Oh, oh god. I thought for sure you were gonna say Ness from Earthbound versus that little shit from Secret of Evermore. No, I'd rather see Ness from Earthbound just be beat to death with a fucking pickup truck. <laughs> what, a Tonka truck? So versus the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> Yeah, Incredible Hulk holding a pickup truck. Hulk, Hulk, will, with it. Hulk armed with a building. So. And here, and, and just so everybody listening knows, no so matter who we Hulk pick, pizza. whoever we pick would always lose to Batman. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Which so. Batman, though? Because that was it's such BS. Have you ever read the Incredible Hulk Batman crossover? No, there, that there makes was... me laugh a lot, though. Batman beat the Hulk because there was a conveniently placed la- like nerve gas line <coughs> above their heads for some reason. They're just in a brand, brand nerve gas. Yeah, you're just you're just hanging out in a building, and there just happens to be a nerve gas pipeline hanging out above your head. That's cool. Would they fucking Doctor Destructo's underground parking garage? <laughs> That's how it goes, folks. <laughs> I fucking hate Batman so much. When was this? How long ago was that? This was in the 70s. Okay, okay. Well, that's not too long after the original Batman series, so I'll. Yeah, that seems. Yeah, I was going to say, that's kind of funny. Adam West versus Lou Ferrigno. Okay, I could buy that. <laughs> <laughs> Adam West could just absolutely annihilate anybody by using that suave, charismatic voice of his. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, and if, yeah, and then he could just holler words at you like box, aluminum, maple syrup. Yeah, you know, maple like syrup. <laughs> aluminum. Anyway, aluminum. that's going to be a I'm here in the, uh, the female bag. So if you have questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, please drop us a line at hatebitpodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to look us up at uh, facebook.com slash hatebitpodcast. We're moving into our second half. Welcome to the second half. Yeah. Half, uh, you know, Sainted Magnus was was waxing very nostalgic earlier before the podcast. No, it's and this is, a, this is a series, or the series, a segment that I'm referring to as the state of arcades in the UK or the arcade state. Sainted Magnus? Yes, well, I like to go to arcades. You know, you go to Blackpool, they've got a fucking huge arcade with, like, coin-op machines. They've got the fucking bay machines. They've got everything you can think of. Well, there's actually... a uh, you know, you've probably heard of this. It's called the Namco Station. And that's basically a, a whole arcade dedicated to Namco machines. Now you'd expect yeah. fighting games, the odd shooting game here or there, racing game, or even some proper classic arcade games. Mm-hmm. I went in to this arcade in the Trafford Centre in Manchester, which isn't that far from my house. And I thought, oh, I'll go, you know, I'll go there and I'll play a few arcade games before I go home. I walked in. They've got the air hockey tables. I thought, oh, the good games are going to be at the back. I walked all the way through. Big, empty fucking space, right? You could probably fit 20 or 30 machines in there. Yeah. There was nothing but B-rate racing games and the odd shooting game, on-rail shooting game. That actually makes no sense. There was no House of the Dead. There was no... There was no time crisis, you know, one of Namco's staple fucking shooting franchises. Nothing. There wasn't even a fighting game in there. Not one. Yeah. It made me depressed. Now, that that made me think, well, where are these machines? Where are these fighting machines? Is the world becoming too censored now? Or is it the fact that arcades are truly dead and in the ground and nobody really wants them anymore? What... They really are. I mean, even in Japan, arcades are dying. Really the only... Like, I heard in the last couple of years that Sega, who owns most of the arcades in Japan, they have those club <laughs> Sega places, uh, that they they had to close down a few of those. And um, over here, I don't know, actually, strangely enough, Phoenix has a few pretty decent arcades. Uh, but they're mostly at, like, theme parks and stuff. Like, theme parks still have arcades out the ass. But, you know, like Six Flags type places, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah, they do. It's very surprising, actually. Yeah, but um, the, outside of that, it's really hard to find a nice arcade. No, the, it's like it's only uh, in seaside towns or 
as you mentioned, theme parks that you find these sorts of places. Yeah, you you'd have to you'd probably have to go to like Blackpool or somewhere. Oh, <laughs> you know Blackpool, I mean? Western Supermare, all the seaside towns, and that's the only places where you're going to find these sorts of games. And even then, it's again, it, all it is is the odd racing game. Now, I'm not bashing racing games because I like racing games, but they're the arcade racing games with usually with half you know poorly maintained machines that do not fucking work. You know, mm-hmm. for example, I was playing on the Fast and the Furious one a few months back, and the cab that I ended up in was broken. You know, you can't fucking race in it. Yeah. They're either oversensitive or not sensitive enough. So. Yeah, and that's another problem because these arcades don't take in as much money. They can't maintain their their machines as well. No, that's exactly. So you end up with busted machines. Like I walked into a. There used to be a Namco cyber station down at uh, the mall, like a, a mall. There's like a mall a mile away from my uh, my parents' place. Excuse me. Uh, and they, it used to be a pretty nice arcade, but I walked in there the last time I did was like a couple years ago. They're gone now. And just like half of the machines, it seemed like when I tried to play them, they were all busted. The, you know, <coughs> the wood work or the joysticks were fucked up and there's sticky shit all over them. You know what I mean? Mm. So. But but this is the thing. This is our video game heritage, and there's literally nothing in the UK where people can go to to actually play all these old, you know, these older games or even these key games within video games, you know, especially on the <clears throat> arcade side of things. Now, yeah, don't worry. Shame. Soon enough, they'll have them for the PlayStation Network. Yeah, it's but a shame it's been... because because online gaming, yeah, you've still got multiplayer gaming, competitive with a fighting game, but there's still, folks, there is nothing like playing. Street Fighter Alpha 3 or uh, Marvel, uh, not not Marvel Capcom, but uh, Capcom SNK 2 in, in an actual arcade and standing next to the guy that you're fighting. Mm. And people are putting their air stacking their quarters on there because they want to play next and shit like there's nothing like that. And you have to you have to be mentally tough. You have to be good at what you do. You have to look this guy in the eyes and be better than him. It's it requires a level of skill that online gaming doesn't. No, and right. it seems to me that right. fuck you has so much more prevalence <laughs> when you're looking at the person you're saying it to. It does. And you notice there's not a whole lot of swearing in an arcade because because you actually have to have balls to say it to someone's face. Oh, yeah, because they'll stop fighting you in the game and fight your face. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll do a show where you can only... Those were the else. days when if you shot your mouth off at a game, your mouth got knocked the fuck off. See, that's one of the reasons why there are so many shit talkers online right now. Like, well, I like, would kick your ass I just... if I saw you in person. It's like, I would pay you to literally come to my place. Like, I'll pay for the plane ticket. I'll, play, I'll, I'll pay to have a place for you to stay around here. I will beat the fucking shit through you. That's yeah, people think they're tough family. because they've seen action movies. Like, I will slam your fucking head in a car door. Yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> now. You know, in real life, whenever... I'm not it's like, to come to you, though. <laughs> Like, if you're at a friend's house and they bring down friends and then you're all playing a fighting game, then that person just so happens to kick the shit out of you. Like, yeah, fuck you. Then they stand up and tower over you and <laughs> they can actually really kick the shit out of you. Then suddenly your your headset banter doesn't really seem to be paying off anymore because now it's real yeah. life serious business and it's going to end up putting a foot in your ass. Yep. Twice. That's- and that's why, you know, even though I've talked a lot of shit about the tournament fighting community or whatever, it's why I still go to fighting game tournaments in the area. There's a really nice tournament here every year called uh, Devastation that is like a big fighting game tournament. It's getting much bigger uh, as, as the years go on. And I still go even though they've stopped featuring halfway decent games because they're pretty much just a big Capcom advertising convention now. But it's... It, it, because when you go out to these places, they're going to have older arcade machines set up, and you're going to actually get that arcade atmosphere that you don't really get anywhere anymore. Yeah, know? stale smoke, etc., <laughs> etc. Et oh, yeah. yeah, so you got it if you can, even though these tourney fags are definitively tourney fags. Uh, it, it's still fun to go out to these things, and you really should support your local tournaments by heading out there, because it's just an atmosphere that you can't get anywhere else. No, that's, that's exactly uh, right. You want to know here? I I didn't get to chime in earlier, and I really wanted to with uh, a couple things. But the the biggest reason why arcades are dying off is, I mean, well, common sense will dictate, you know, consoles, PC, handhelds. But it's really true. You can go to an arcade machine right now. Most new arcade machines, and they'll want like a dollar 
are a dollar twenty-five, or sometimes even more than that, to go and play with a couple credits. That's a whole lot of money to somebody like me when I could just go buy the game and keep it forever for like thirty bucks. But don't forget, you have to take into account the idea that people have that opportunity to get it without going anywhere, without doing anything. That's why the average teenager weighs upwards of 300 pounds in this country. Yeah, I mean, that, that's true, too. But I was just trying to discount even past the fact that, yeah, we can get it on our home consoles. We can download it. We, we could get ROMs of it, you know, and fucking get it for free, not have to pay for it whatsoever and still get all the enjoyment out of it or have to go somewhere, you know, which requires gas or bumming a ride or what, whatever the fuck it is that you're going to do to get to said location and play it, which will cost even more money. But the thing is, it was just about the atmosphere and having fun with friends while you're out and about but it really, really is man if that. you don't if you've never been out to an arcade you got to go to one of those ones that are attached to like a pizzeria like i don't know if you have um, or a bowling alley yeah i don't know if you have those ones like do you have peter piper pizza out where you are no you? okay well it's like a place out here it's just a big pizza joint and you I go there the one in texas there's nothing like waiting for your pizza to be ready and rocking some Mortal Kombat with some friends. And not giving a fuck once it got there. See, it's you know what's true, fucked up? completely ignoring the pizza when it shows up. Dude, like, literally up the street from me, we had this one place that, I mean, they, they've moved since then. But the area, of, like the dining hall area, the one wall was just lined with arcade machines. And it had good ones, too. And I used to go up there and I would play the arcade machines. I normally never got food there, but because I was up there playing all the time with my friends, because we'd just be walking about the neighborhood. Fuck it. Why not go for a couple of rounds in Marvel versus Capcom? OK, and we'll go in there and play. Then we start buying food from there. Then we were just hanging out, you know, and it's stuff like that that you can't get from just hang out at your house. Sure, you can order the pizza and have it brought there, but it's just. It's really about just being amused by the fact that you're in front of a real machine and everything. It's just one of those things that you can't explain to somebody. They just have to get kind of like when I try to tell people you should get a Nintendo game instead of just downloading a ROM because it's a lot more fun. I can't explain it to you. It just is what it is because it's an analog experience. Hmm. It cannot be reproduced. Yep. You have to be in it. You have to be of it. Just like you cannot truly appreciate history if you haven't lived through said history. Yeah. That's correct. No, definitely. And, and that's exactly know? what it is. It's a we've time. Awfully, it's a place. We've gotten awfully philosophical on this shit. But. Well, you know what? I have, to, I have to admit that there is some room for some philosophic <laughs> waxing here. Excuse philosophical, excuse me. Um you know, it's it's interesting to me because something I've said in the region where I live, I live in Los Angeles, California, and honestly, at least over the last seven or eight years, the best arcades in my area are in fact laundromats, and that's where you go ah oh, and feel bad for me because I I'm not fucking kidding. That that is it. We have a few arcades still lingering around. We have nickel arcades called uh, Nickel City or Nickel Nickel floating around, and those are the worst examples. <laughs> of arcades or entertainment centers you've ever seen. I cannot believe how much I find cola spilled on everything. <laughs> the thing is, but, uh, do you guys have Dave and Buster's over there? We have Dave and Buster's over here, and it is a fucking joke. See, the Dave and Buster's that I have nearby, it's in an area called the Waterfront. And mm -hmm. Waterfront, they've been trying to build up, but it's surrounded by the ghetto, so it's not going to work. But anyway, they have a Dave and Buster's down there. And that one's a pretty decent one. It's got a lot of my favorite arcade machines in it. They've also got machines in there. I don't know why they even bother because no one will ever, ever play them. But, it, you know, they have they have modern stuff and they have old shit, too. So it's a, it's a nice little thing of both. But you can also sit down, get a meal, or you can go to the bar and get a couple of drinks. Stuff like that, to me, is pretty cool that they try supporting. It's like a big kid's Chuck E. Cheese. So if anybody's listening to this and you're like, what the fuck is a Dave & Buster's? Well, if you've heard of Chuck E. Cheese... If you're not that. 21, don't fucking bother. Yeah, pretty much. As a matter of fact, I don't think you can get in unless you're 21. No, you, you have to be 21 to get in, or you have to be with somebody who's either 25 or 30 years old. I don't like Dave & Buster's because it's an overly whitewashed corporate experience. It does not feel like being in an arcade. It feels like you're in a big room that's got a bunch of you know games and a bunch of Mexican people cleaning the carpet. It does not feel like a genuine arcade in any way. I know that from firsthand experience. I used to work. I don't know. That sounds like an arcade to me. 
What? <laughs> no one cleaned the floor in an arcade, motherfucker. You know That's that. That's really true. All floors were sticky, and nobody oh, was having sticky a and smelly. And for some and reason, you ever, started... dude, did you ever encounter like one of those busted arcade <laughs> machines? Like, like one time, there was a Street Fighter machine. I, my editor, this is my video editor, and I have talked about this. This happened when he used to go to arcades. Occasionally, you'd come across an arcade machine where the little change box had been cracked open and you just grab a bunch of tokens and go use them on other machines i and have just, seen uh, that yeah because they for, like they forgot to put the door back on and your arm was just small enough to fit in there yeah, yeah all the time. I know exactly what you're talking about but if you want to talk about abominations and what the state of arcades is i used to work for a company owned by sega and dreamworks called GameWorks Limited Liability Corporation. Has anybody ever heard of a GameWorks? Yeah, GameWorks is out here in... Do you uh, still have the GameWorks in Tempe? Yeah, yeah, we still do. Okay. It's, it's not half bad. It's like two stories. Got a lot well, of good... It, they're, they're different. See, you got... The one in Tempe is one of the older stores. It looks like a fucking dungeon, and I love it. And then I worked at the one in uh, over here in Los Angeles in Long Beach, California. And... Oh my God! You talk about a whitewashed experience. I was the, I was the uh, redemption manager. If you know redemption, that's where you win prizes with the tickets. And a lot of people threw up in my workplace. <laughs> it, it's it's true. And I remember, you know, when I felt that company go south. But it was, it was. I must say this. Looking back, it was such a beautiful experience just to be around those machines because we had good technicians, guys who knew how to fix it. We had Sega Namco certified technicians in our place and just everything ran great. You know, there was a few, you know, a few uh, stutters here and there. Dude, that but... would be such a cool job title, though. I'm a Sega slash Namco technician. What oh, I'm, bitches. Authorized, I'm authorized Sega technician as well. Oh, aren't we? Fancy? I had to go through a... We desperately need to talk about something else because we have lingered on the arcade time. I mean, I love talking about we'll it, talk but about we really... Else. Let me just say this. If you live near a game works, get a job there. Work there for a summer. You're going to hate it, but you're going to appreciate it once you get older. Plus, the girls there are really easy. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> See, there you go. It's life lessons. It's true. I, uh, I assure you. And you know what? I if had no idea... <clears throat> I had no idea your sister worked there. You know, oh, yeah. Dude, let me tell you. She says the one in Tempe. So, <laughs> get a job at the GameWorks in Tempe or the GameWorks in... There's only, like, six more left. But if you get a job there and you don't get laid in the first few months, that means you're fucking ugly. Anyway, <laughs> we're moving on to... Oh, you guys, you're not going to believe this. Alpha Omega Sin was out at the flea market a little while back. In Ohio, was it, Alpha? Uh, yeah, it's Rogers Flea Market. Like, it's <laughs> literally right on the border of PA in Ohio. What'd you find over there? Uh, a lot of really good stuff, but the main thing that I'm going to yammer on about is this one pretty cool dude who was also a metalhead and selling metal vinyl, which was pretty neat. So video games and metal vinyl, he got me and my brother's attention uh, immediately. So wander on over, and back in the day, they had the little LCD handheld games, like the Game & Watch games and Tiger Electronic handheld games. Well, he had one there. I had never seen one of these before, let alone knew that this particular company put out one. But um, Acclaim put out a LCD handheld game for 1943, which is made by Capcom. A little top-down shooter. Uh, there's 1942, 1943, and there's uh, there's two more, I believe. Um, but this one was for 1943. It's in great shape. Uh, I got it only for a couple bucks. I was really happy with it, and it worked. And the thing is, it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm, Please I'm explain actually... to the kids at home what 1943 is. Literally, you're a plane. And there's other planes, and you shoot them down. And then there will be battleships down in the water, and you shoot at them. And that's pretty much it. There's nothing fancy about it. If you've ever played any vertical shooter or top-down shooter, it's it's that. You know, you get your power-ups, you avoid getting hit, that's it. You know, it, it's, it's a lot of fun for anybody that's into that kind of stuff. I am. Uh, but this one, you know, it's very basic. They don't have the battleships or anything. In this one, it's just planes coming at you, and you have to avoid incoming fire and whatnot. But it was just cool as fuck to find a little LCD handheld game like this in great condition of a game that I like a whole lot by Capcom on Nintendo, and made by Acclaim, no less. It just I'm actually holding it right now, still fucking befuddled as to the, this thing exists. What sort of mysticism is this that conjured such a contraption? But it's it is it's really really kick ass, and it just it brought up a big discussion between. 
all of us, uh, you know, we were talking about LCD handheld games. So that's where we start yammering. So yammer. <laughs> well, you know, just the LC- I didn't really appreciate the LCD games until I was, you know, an adult. And they're actually quite fabulous. You know, I have a few of the Tiger games myself. And I was surprised to find out that they've steadily increased in value over the years. I had no oh, yeah. idea. And I've got um, I've got uh, Simon's Quest, Castlevania 2 for uh, Tiger handheld. And I have, I've never powered it on. But that sounds like a really horrible idea to try and scale that game down to a Tiger game. <laughs> But <laughs> apparently it's been done, and apparently it's kind of valuable. I was very surprised, but, uh, you know, I love I love those things. I, I'm a huge fan of the Nintendo Game & Watch. All of those I love, so. Dude, Game & Watch is sweet. It really is. Uh, if anybody was just like, I really wish I could get a hold of one, just pick up the uh, Game & Watch collections on Nintendo DS. You'll get a feel for it. You know, granted, it's not the real deal, but... I mean, if you're just trying to emulate the experience as best as possible, well, that's as best as possible. And it's totally worth it. If you can get a hold of Game & Watch games, they're, they're highly valuable, worth a ton of money, depending on which ones that you have. I've got a handful of them because I found them at a thrift store. Remember, thrift stores, they're your friends. They but, are. Um, they used to be your friends until they found out what we were doing. Shit, man. They still are. You just got to go to the right ones. You can't g- always rely on the Goodwill, so I'll let it... Her- Here, here's a... Uh, Goodwill is your enemy. Uh, it's not always your enemy, but I'll, I'll tell you this much. Just a fun little tidbit of information and collecting advice from Alpha Omega Sin. If you are going and collecting games, do not always rely on Goodwill. This is why. Goodwill, within recent years, has their own auction website now, and they've been tossing everything on there. Video games, they don't know the fucking price of them, but here's the thing. They know that video games are expensive, and that they go for like $50 and $60 a piece. They're not absolutely brain dead, and they will go and put up Nintendo, Super Nintendo 64, everything that you can think of. The downside to this is that tons of people go onto these auction sites just like eBay. So you aren't going to strike a really good deal on there. So you might as well just skip Their on Their shipping it. prices are absurd. Yes. yes, Ludicrous even. Mm. So it, it's kind of unfortunate. But um, yeah, so anybody so, want to share some LCD handheld games? Well, before we get on, I just want to say right now, do not shop Goodwill.com. Thank you. <laughs> And that's another uh, money saving tip from the I, I, podcast. I'm trying to strike such a massive I'm, blow to a <laughs> non-profit organization. My memories of LCD games are like you're you're talking about like the big old like plastic things that were like they would be like movie themed generally. It'd be like Beauty and the Beast, the game. Sometimes, and, yeah, and little, sometimes they would have those. Yeah, those 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 are my memories of them. And no, they're they're not very favorable. <laughs> <laughs> they were not very good. They were like Atari 2600 type gameplay, uh, and very. They're, they're neat. That's their thing. I mean, I wouldn't call them you know powerhouses of gaming, but they I were neat. Say, I would say primarily, if they have appeal right now, it's primarily uh, probably just because of it's retro and it's hip to be retro. I guess it, it's the, well, the, the nostalgia goggles. Awesome for two dollars, not for forty dollars. <laughs> A bit of nostalgia goggles going on is what I because when I was a kid I thought those things sucked. I was like, why don't I have a Game Boy? <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's Game the Boy thing. They move. they're very very basic, but I appreciate them for what they are and what they can do, which is next to jack shit. And I'm well aware <laughs> that they can do next to jack shit. But the thing is, the good ones I'm like pretty cool. And and one of the ones which. I had and I played to death that thing. I actually wish I still had it because that thing was in beat the fucking dish when I was done. But uh, Konami released a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one. It was tall and green. I can still see it in my head right now. Yeah. Um, and it it's like from it's the segment. Cool. If anybody remembers playing through Ninja Turtles where you're swimming through the seaweed and if you touch it, you get electrocuted. And you uh. get okay, that's a very traumatizing experience for a young child who's a big Ninja Turtles fan like myself and, and, and my friends here who are on the podcast and many of you listening at home or wherever the fuck you're at. But uh, here's the thing. They made, they made a fucking a, a little LCD handheld that was based around this. So you have to swim through to see. That's the worst thing I've ever heard. It, it's, so, it's so fucked up. I remember when I first got it, it took me forever. Like, you have to swim to the side. I can't remember 100%, but there's something off to the side. I don't know if it switches or you have to save somebody. I forget. But there's something off to the right-hand side you have to get to and fuck with it. Maybe it's keys. I don't know. But anyway, 
Uh, if anybody remembers, please comment in the comment box and don't Google it. Just try to get it from your own memory. But anyway, um, it, you know, <laughs> it's literally just like the most traumatic fucking thing. So I was so excited. My mom got it for me because I had Ninja Turtle everything. She, she's like, here you go. I ripped the fucking plastic shell apart and I start playing it. And I'm just like, ah! wanting to fucking break the thing, just flipping <laughs> out because it was so fucking hard. Like if you thought it was hard on Nintendo, wait till you played a fucking LCD handheld version of it. You want to snap that bitch in two and start sucker punching babies. It's fucking annoying. Oh. Beep, beep, beep. beep. Beep, beep, beep. Oh, <laughs> the, 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 just just running along the same vein as uh, Ninja Turtles. There, there was actually a sequel to that called Ninja Turtles Two, and basically the whole gameplay was that you as a turtle slap bang in the middle of the screen, and all the enemies came from around you, and you're just stood in the middle of the screen. And you had to hit like Smash TV. Yeah, no, you actually had to hit these people that were coming on either side of the uh, screen. <laughs> Quite cool. Wow, I never heard of that one either. Yeah. But just just speaking of uh, LCD handhelds, Tommy did those uh, goggle things. Do you remember them? He had to be oh, sat in front of a. It was like it was like a goggles thing that you put in front of your face, and then he had like battle tanks and racing, and the other, there was like a plane fighting one as well. Was it LCD? Yeah, it was LCD. Wait a minute. Did um. Did it have like a head strap, and then just like there was one little goggle part for your eye? It was like, they looked like a pair of binoculars from Star Trek or something. Oh, see, I never yeah. saw that shit then. You had to be sat in front of uh, bloody light to uh, to actually see the LCD on the inside. It was... was this released wide or was this a European exclusive? No, it was wide, as far as I know. Really? I, I've never heard of it. Yeah, Razor neither have I. Uh, I'll look it up and I'll sh send you a link. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. I've, I've never seen it personally. Uh, I'll, in case people are wondering what I'm talking about, I'll post a picture down in the description. So, you know, a link to the picture in the description. So check it out. I mean, what's what's that website that has the... Didn't you mention it earlier, Alpha? I, I don't remember. But uh, with the... They basically emulate all the LCD games? Um. Well, it, it, there are... Um, I think that there's emulators for it. See, what I was talking about... No, no, was... no. There's, there's an actual website at Flash-based. You can play these old LCD games, and they've got oh. this huge library of them up, and I'm blanking on what the name of it is, but I've played it before. That I don't know. If uh, somebody had talked about stuff like that, but I heard that there was emulators and shit strictly just for, like, game and watch and bullshit like that. Yeah. The, no, a lot of these old LCD games have been brought to, like, websites and stuff and transferred over into Flash. And they it's cool because they actually scanned the front of the actual machine. So you actually have to click on the buttons themselves on the on the thing. It's, it's pretty fucking cool. I was going to say, that is kind of nifty. I mean, I mean, the thing is, you know, again... We we all understand that these things are not technical technological leaps at all. And at the time, I mean, there was a fucking Game Boy out for fuck's oh, sake, yeah. you know. These were unimpressive then. But the thing is, it's just one of those things that when we had it, you know, they, they yeah. cost what like ten, fifteen bucks. Oh, they were extremely the cheap. They were the kind of thing, you know, you were heading on a road trip or something, and your mom was like, "Uh, here you go." Yeah, you know what I mean. Here, just in the back and shut the fuck up. Yeah, just <laughs> shut up. We're, we'll be in <laughs> no, the spring. Your mom's at Walmart. It's like, yeah, the kids are stupid. They'll like these. Oh, there, there's one interesting thing. Um, I, I've actually got this from uh, my way, way back in the day when I worked at uh, Kmart. Um, they had Nintendo put them out. They took some of their Game and Watch games and they scaled them down really, really small to uh, keychain size. And they look like miniature Game Boys, and they—I know that they had a blue. I remember one. those. Yeah, dude, they—they they were pretty fucking sweet. Blue. They had a blue one and a yellow one. I have the blue one. Uh, it's—it's it's a Mario game. I can't remember what it is. I, I think it's his Mario's uh, Cement Factory, maybe. Could have um, been. I don't recall the specifics, but I do remember those. But the the yellow one, I think that one's Donkey Kong. But they released that, and I remember just fucking. Bl being blown away i was like oh my god look how tiny this thing is i actually had all my house keys and everything but uh then it started getting fucked up in my pocket so i just put it away because i didn't want it to be all jacked up and, never and then you moved again. on to your digital pet didn't you? <clears throat> yeah onto my gigapet your gigapet i remember <laughs> i was a little about the gigapets how you could discipline them so you know i knew dudes in high school that had those fucking things so i just beat the hell out of their 
you know, their gigapet and then put it back in their bag. Dude, what's fucked is I'm I'm looking for uh, two specifically still. They're both uh, the Pokemon ones. They had a, a regular one, and then they had a colored version of one. I mean the Pokemon and Mini. I, I've been dying to get a hold of them both because I passed on them when I was younger, and I'm kicking my own ass for it now because they're, they're kind of expensive. It would have been destroyed anyway, let's be realistic. Oh, yeah, that, that's true. I probably would have fucking traded it way back in the day. I'm like, oh, I, I won't matter. And then no, I just get... would have jammed it full of firecrackers just to see what would happen, wouldn't you? No, I, that I wouldn't actually do. Ah. Cause I, I, I cherish my game stuff, except for Shaq Fu. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised you haven't put one in a microwave yet. I see. I need the the spare microwave. I need the spare microwave for that. If you have a microwave that you're not using, please send a picture to hatebitpodcast at gmail dot com, <laughs> and then please pay to ship it to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> because I plan on putting Shaq Fu inside of it and saying good night. <laughs> Preview for the Alpha Omega Sin show. Anyway, do we have anything else to say about LCD games? Because I feel drowning in nostalgia. Well, I found the uh, I found a picture of what I was talking about. It's in the uh description box down below for anybody that wants to check it out. What else are you put in the description box? Yeah, it's called the Tomitronic 3D. They were called. Tommy, I have never heard of that. So I'm I'm very interested in it now. Ch- All right, we Definitely gotta talk about. about. We gotta we gotta talk about the next news. That's topic. right, that's right. And then you know, you know what, folks, we're moving towards the end of the podcast, and this is a big one. You can hear if you can hear it in Razor Fist voice. You can hear uh, the gnashing of teeth and the biting of nails. It's I got, I'm going to say it right now. Ding dong, the flick is dead. Michael Bay's Alien Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has been postponed slash canceled. Razor <laughs> Fist. Na, 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 na. Goodbye. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, baby. We yeah. all sang in unison. So lean uh, into it, man. <laughs> yeah, so Michael Bay, um, if... You know, all the return money that you're getting on Battleship wasn't already a sign. People are getting sick of you awfully fucking fast. So, uh, yeah, don't do not do Ninja Turtles. So keep it this way. Keep it gone. Keep it dead. i will make everybody happy. Okay. Love Ninja I was Turtle really fans. Hoping, I was really hoping and dying that this movie was going to come out just so this asshole could lose millions. You know what's weird? I, after I made the video about it, people would ask me, like, are you going to go see it? It's like, are what? you fucking? Yeah, I've literally had people ask me, like, even though you you hate the very concept of it, are you gonna go see it? Like, no, I'm not going to. Why would I go see something that I will not in any what? fucking way endorse, no matter what? Because if I pay, they don't care if I liked the movie or hated it. They just saw that they got money, and that's what they they need is money. So me paying to go see something I don't like and fucking torturing myself, it it only hurts me and betters them. I would rather watch a shaky copy on a handy cam bootleg. Now, Michael Bay, as much as I do, as much as Battleship looks like a raving piece of shit, I don't think Michael Bay is involved in that movie. Really? I don't think, I don't think he made that. I don't think Somebody he Somebody even... told, I, I could have swore that he was. I don't it know. It looks, looks a lot. Like it Michael looks Michael Bay ish. Here looks... on the 8 Bit Podcast, we always check our facts. You know that. I yeah, don't think a- he's absolutely. Actually involved in. He's been too busy fucking up the Ninja Turtles. So. Now we have sources that say that the movie has been postponed. Some saying that its uh, production has been cancelled. What is what is the final verdict on that? Uh, well, just to answer your question on the whole Michael Bay touching Battleship, he didn't actually touch it. Hey, he didn't touch it inappropriately. Razor no. Fist is right. Let the ticker tape parade begin. The, <laughs> the director was Peter Berg. Okay. Yeah, it looks like Jesus Christ does it ever look like a Michael Bay film, but it's not. It's not. So. Well, I just want to know where did they? <laughs> I wonder how much source material they factored into Battleship. <laughs> oh, and you know what? I did look it up. I do apologize, folks. Michael Bay had nothing to do with it, but the movie was compared a whole bunch, is a whole yeah. whole bunch to it. And as a matter of fact, if you look at it, it's kind of hard not to notice that it just looks like it reeks of Transformers. In way too many ways. It really does. Oh my god. But yeah, god. it's a miserable pile of shit, and so is Michael Bay and his face. I am although face. although I did think it was funny when I was watching the trailer when uh the big thing came out of the water and shot the little red pegs at the ship. That was <laughs> fucking hilarious. I was like, Oh my god, they actually did it. <laughs> 
Oh, See, yeah, it's one yeah. of those things where you just go, wow, they really had the balls. I know. They they, they had the unmitigated nutsackery. You want to know what they probably did? They they put that in the movies, then they looked over at everybody like, see, it is based off the board game. So I know, all right. fuck. look, we were true to the source material because <laughs> pegs. <laughs> yeah, and I understand there's going to be a movie version of uh, Roseanne, Roseanne Barr's, uh, you know, TV show Roseanne. They're going to make a movie of it. They're going to call it Hungry, Hungry Hippos. <laughs> oh, God. We're just, <laughs> I've just spotted something on uh, IMDb for Battleship. He actually, What's that? The, uh, some people actually gave it a 6.2. Those people should turn inside out and fall into a salt mine. Well, it, <laughs> it, it is one thing that will make you laugh. Then Metacritic, Metacritic gave it a Metascore of 41 out of 100. Why? should have one. Why give it Why give it anything? I ought to shave your nutsack and set you down in a bucket of witch hazel. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not aimed at me, by the way. That's aimed at fucking Metacritic. <laughs> Why are you advertising for Metacritic? No, I'm just saying. I just saw it on there. I just want to... get the witch hazel. Let's get. <laughs> yes. <laughs> get the witch hazel. It's like anyway. The only, only thing we can really say is that Michael Bay and his fucking Ninja Turtles movie. We are happy here at the Hate Bit Podcast to tap dance on its grave. Absolutely. I. I... I'm honestly going to river dance, though, being Irish. So <laughs> watch my legs just fucking go a mile a minute. <laughs> do, 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 and, and I'm going to do this still dead combat. Yeah. Are you going to so wear a big puffy Michael Flatley shirt? <laughs> I can afford one of those. <laughs> you going to get your chia chest out, man? Uh, dude, I, I need I need more chesticle hair, so... <laughs> You know what Razor Fist is doing, right? He's got a big leather coat on, and he's just punching the air. That's how excited he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, next? yeah, we were happy to shit all over that. What else? What's going on, Saint? What were you saying? No, I was just going to say what's next, but oh well. What's next? It's, it's time for my favorite part, your favorite part, the Coupe de Gracie, the rants. <laughs> and today, the rant is brought to us by Razor Fist and Nabisco. I don't know how that <laughs> yeah. happened. But anyway, <laughs> and uh, he's he got something to say about technology today. And, uh, well, and Chris, after, after enduring David Jaffe's absurd comments this past week about the Wii U not being impressive and the importance of having a larger technological EP than your fucking adversary, I could no longer withstand the urge to unleash the figurative Kraken. So... Technology, I think we all agree, technology is the core impetus for all the innovation that fuels the video game industry. This this is all but uncontested fact. Even the less technologically imposing uh, machines like the Nintendo Wii, out of necessity, were packed with a new motion control device so they could at least perpetrate the masquerade of being on the cutting edge. But as the wheels of technological advancement sort of grind ahead, they simultaneously crush the smaller studios underfoot. So... Hate bit hedonists, rageaholics, we have officially reached the point where video games are no longer pitched to shareholders as fucking video games. Rather, they're being shopped to these Fortune 500 fuckwits as glorified fucking tech demos, which is how self-sabotaged shit sacks like Fracture actually wind up making it to fucking market. Hey, we got this great new physics engine. You can manipulate the very ground you walk on. Yeah, sweet. What else you got? Uh, protagonist's name is Jet Brody. Smithers, lend that man $12.3 million. In this economy, how does even the most self-deceived country club cunt flap have that much fucking currency to toss into a goddamn well? What if you flatulent fuckheads pick your teeth with unicorn ivory, wash it down with Sasquatch tears? If you're so intent on fucking squandering your copious riches on shit... Well, here's a thought. Why don't you just buy the broken-ass game when it comes out instead of wasting $100 million funding the fucking festering shit pile? And developers are culpable, as far as I'm concerned, in this fucking variety of Windex-swilling retardation. I've seen developers begin interviews, honest to God, I've seen them begin interviews by saying, well, we spent so much on the proprietary game engine that we then had to make up for it, so we had to appeal to a wider audience. Thus, the smaller market game studios find themselves pulverized between a rock and a fucking greedy place. But why is this a bad thing, you might ask? After all, we've all imbibed in these bloated AAA extravaganzas. Hell, I've, I've made my show based entirely on reviewing these kinds of games. 
and we've beaten it fucking raw to every overpriced pixel. Here's the problem. Without a small market title title like fucking Baldur's Gate, KOTOR never gets made. Without KOTOR, Mass Effect doesn't dash the hopes of every beluggle fan tard in the Western Hemisphere. Instead of naturally building from small market successes to AAA tripe, game studios have nowhere to hone their craft. They're immediately and violently launched into the fray with no safety net, a multi-million dollar budget, and a hastily scrawled note that reads, if at all possible, do not fuck up. Sign the pious conglomerate of, ob of fucking oblivious shareholders. Is it any wonder, given that structure, that the modern game industry is such a smoldering fucking pile? Did Red Dead Redemption require Rockstar's proprietary Euphoria engine in order to be fun? Fuck no. It would have been just as fun with a plain old Havoc or Unreal physics engine. If you don't believe me, try playing Gun sometime. And the money they saved could have been reinvested to ensure the game's narrative wasn't a straight goddamn line. Game industry, you're officially wasting money on Fuck all! You're so busily measuring your little technological cocktail wiener against Konami's little cocktail wiener that you've neglected to note that you're both being torn from top to tail, to, from top to fucking tail, by capitalism's throbbing Burmese python penis. And in the process, you've given gaming at large the allure of a school shooting. I cannot fucking take this. I'm Razor Fist. God fucking speak. I was about to say applaud that man. I'm glad that somebody, somebody, somebody did. And I'm in favor of anything that has the allure of a school shooting. <laughs> maybe we should. Maybe Python, we should. everyone. <laughs> Burmese Python. Maybe we should actually coin the phrase uh, "developer developers machine gunning." You know. No, but I think the developers have helped out the term "developmentally disabled." Well, there we go. We should coin that phrase. <laughs> Oh, they already had that. You know, you're not allowed to make fun of people and coin a phrase. You, you want to know what, though? <laughs> a, a lot of the stuff that you were talking about, it all attributes to graphic hounds. It How, does. You know, you want to know what's fucking sad? And I mean, you know, we, we've all given our opinions on it time and again. I'm pretty sure I had an entire rant just for graphic hounds. But uh, it, it's a fact that I've met. I think you're overdue two... to do another one, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> Oh, it, it'll come again, but uh, that's what she said. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, it, it it really just boils down to them. And the worst part about it is that then all the other developers who are making really awesome games, whose games don't look, oh my gosh, like the bestest realisticness, oh my god, and don't have the top of the line fucking engine, all of a sudden sit by the wayside because they don't look as good and as appealing visually to these fucking numbnuts. So they don't get the recognition that they deserve. They don't get the funding to be able to put out there for everybody to see. It's like... You know, no fucking wonder, man. We got we're living an entire generation of uh, bringing up fucking gamers that think graphics come first, everything else fuck all fifth place. Yeah. What happens to a good story? What happens to it's good gameplay? Even... What happens to all that sort of things that actually give the essence of a decent fucking video? What happened to a realistic marketing campaign? What? Ha why does that matter when you have eye candy? At what, least it well... looks appeasing. Yeah, and, and look, it's not even all about eye candy, because um, some of it is just that these games are tech demos. You know, some of it is just that, you know, like Assassin's Creed 1 was very tech demo-ish. I like Assassin's Creed 1, but let's be real here. A lot of it was, look at what we can do. You know mm. what I mean? We can do this, we can do that, yeah. we can be open world, we can have real-time physics, we can have, you know... There's a lot of that kind of shit. Fracture, yeah. like I mentioned, is exactly, perfectly exemplifies that kind of mentality. Um, you're seeing a lot of games like that. And that's another reason why, you know, people have been busting my balls because I didn't hop on the fucking gravy train with Watch Dogs. As far as I'm concerned, Watch Dogs looks like it's perpetuating that mentality. It's a tech demo, not a game. Did, did we see anything about the story that would make us remotely interested? No. We saw, ooh, look, you can hack, and you can slide over cover and pick up guns at the same time, and it all slows down into slow-mo at the same time. It, it's more of a tech demo than a game, and we're seeing a lot of these kind of fucking games springing up. Yeah, but well, again, think about the entire crop of fucking gamers, man. They're not interested. You know how many gamers I come across that just ma I, I, Keep in mind, they're first time through a game. I've just mashed a fucking button to get through in any kind of narrative. 
Any yeah. kind that just pops up on screen, just shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. Oh, my God, all this talking. Keep in mind, it's been like 10 seconds of them fucking going and having any kind of a fucking conversation at all. And it's shut the fuck up. Oh, my God, just shut the fuck up. And I know damn well listeners right now have come across the same exact kind of grouping of fucking idiots where they're like, I can't stand a story. And I'm not just saying it's only story, but I'm, I'm saying there's people just they can't handle anything. If you are not yeah. immediately fucking shooting something in the face, you're bored. Fuck you. Well, let, let's let's think about this for a second. All these, at least in recent years, have amounted to, hey, look what we can do. That's fine for movies and everything, but games, if you didn't know, are about, hey, look what you can do. Yep. And I want to know, what the fuck can I do? If you're this interested in pushing your hardware and giving these stunning visuals and blah, 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 then you should probably make movies. Mm. Yep. Yep. You know, maybe I'm just crazy, but... You know, this thing, it's its its spreading. It's getting worse. And how do I know? Because Nintendo, a company that I'm a big fan of, uh, well, until recently anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> and you know why, uh, made a reputation of using inferior technology to bring in the masses and remain, you know, a Fortune 500 company, I think. No, I, I could be wrong. A very powerful company anyway. I, I can't back that up, and I won't because I'm better than that. But... <laughs> They, you know, and it's now spreading to Nintendo. Nintendo is now becoming hardware hounds. And they're, they're going to suffer. They're going to suffocate under the weight of their own creation. Yeah. This is a lot just like if Dr. Frankenstein's face got sat on by the monster. Just because you got this uh, amazing tech, I mean, and it applies to consoles, too. The original Xbox was the technical behemoth of the last console generation. Did that help it much? Not really. It was still, it was in dick last for a while, then it moved into second Towards the end, it started to pull ahead, but still, it was it ended up in second place. Period. It's the same problem the PS3 is having. You, technology does not sell games. Games sell games, and games are not tech demos. Those are two different things. And yeah, the thing is, there's a if, reason that they sell a lot more Hondas than they sell um, Mercedes. Expensive Maseratis. That's what I was gonna say. They sell a lot more Hondas than they sell Maseratis. It, but it, here's here's another thing, and okay. All of us, considering when we grew up and some of the shit we even talked about on here just to showcase, you know, what era we fucking grew up in gaming. Okay, you could literally, I shit you not, okay, I was, I know that we had talked about all the games that we were playing recently, but I had my girlfriend playing through Snatcher because I know that she would like the game a lot. And you want to hear her say Snatch, don't you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, But here's the thing. Okay, Snatcher, to me, is one of the most visually pleasing games I've ever seen in my entire life. And it still is to this day. I could not stop talking about how cool it looked. You know, and somebody may look at the game and say completely the opposite. But the thing is, if they would bring out a game right now, I'm talking looked exactly like Snatcher with the graphics and everything, I would be blown away. I'd be absolutely blown away more by that than I would be by games that look like, oh, my God, real life. And that's really the truth. Am I saying that I hate games that try to be the most realistic? No, but I'm just conveying that you do not need to always push the fucking hardware to the point that you are going bankrupt to put a fucking game out and you're putting that ahead of the the enjoyment of the fucking consumer. Like, it makes no sense, man. I like good graphics, but was it were the good graphics worth? losing small game studios yeah yeah and that worth too, losing absolutely. games period yeah was it worth losing companies like looking glass studios was it worth losing companies like origin was it worth, these are great companies that made amazing games and games that that are still being ripped off to this day by these triple a developers it there's not going to be any innovation if we don't have any more developers like that and and we don't we and, just have. And you know what? I want to know how, how come no one. Oh, I'm sorry, go on. Uh, I was just saying, look at Xbox Live Arcade. Look at some of the indie developed games on there. Yeah. Why don't they get pushed for like a big release? I'm talking on a fucking disc at a discounted price. Why can't they get pushed the same exact way? It makes no fucking sense. They deserve the funding. They make game. They have great ideas, but nobody wants to pay any attention to them because this isn't a first-person shooter that's going to appease to an entire fucking thirty-plus million dollar fucking campaign. Oh my god, I I don't understand this. Uh, how could I get behind a project like this? I'm sorry. Not Call of Duty. Not yeah. Call of Duty. You know, it, it just, oh, my God. It, it's actually, like, it, it pisses me off to the point that it just makes me depressed. 
Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, you're literally just like, this is like my favorite thing in the entire world, and you're just being so stupid. Now you made me sad face. Come the fuck. (laughs) I'm sorry, Chaos. Please go ahead. I'm sad face. No, all I was saying is, you know, someone needs to take a, you know, take a look at the book from the American uh, domestic auto market. When you realize when you keep introducing power on top of power on top of power, you ultimately reach an inevitable plateau. And the only place to go from a plateau is back down the same, the other side of the hill. Yep. Yeah. So there needs to be something learned. I, I do not understand how they were able to strangulate an entire industry by somehow claiming to have made it better at the same time. You want to know what another problem is? They don't realize that the market is capable of handling everything. I'm talking like little development studios, big development studios, games that are absolutely cutting edge as far as like technology is concerned, and games that really just go with their own niche thing. I really don't think they understand how capitalism works because you keep introducing shit that is unusable, no matter how powerful or impressive it is, it goes away. The Betamax was really impressive for its time, and look what happened. Yeah. The Laserdisc was really impressive for its time, and yeah. look what happened. And, and now we're, history's repeating itself with the Blu-ray. Yeah, what happened with there HD DVD as well, so... Exactly. I completely agree. Completely agree. Absolutely, all the way down the line. So the lesson to be learned is, you see, here's, here's the problem that I'm noticing. They seem to think um, the video game industry especially the big three, seem to think that they're still in an industry all by themselves. But when times are tough, entertainment is entertainment. Yep. And they're now competing against everybody. The movies, the phones, the games. Everybody's competing for the exact same money. And I don't think anyone's taking that into account. But they will from the unemployment line. No, yeah. they they really are. Enter- you you've said it exactly as is. Entertainment is entertainment. Video okay, when somebody goes out and they're just like, "Well, I'm bored. I would like to play a game." Well, that's $60 or I could go to the movies. I could take me and a couple of friends and get food <laughs> afterwards and it's still cheaper. Hello? You can. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of sad to think about. I mean, sure, okay, that's like 2 hours versus I don't know what most games are like anywhere between eight to twelve. True. So yeah, there, there's a I big difference. Uh, eight to twelve. You hope it's eight to twelve. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. Black Ops was like an hour and a half. Black Ops <laughs> doesn't really have a, a one player campaign. They put it there to be nice. Uh, <laughs> you know, they're doing they're doing gamers a favor by putting it there. Keep in mind, it's all it's all yeah. multiplayer. Well, you, you can't get a date. Here you go. Yeah, it's, yeah. Kind, of, it's kind of like what uh, EA did with Battlefield Three. That story was absolutely horrible. It wasn't even a oh, yeah. story. It was like five oh, minutes yeah. of, uh, run this way, bang, bang, bang. Run that way, bang, bang, bang. And that's pretty much what the gaming industry is turning into. Uh, you know, I'm, I think I'm, 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 proud, I'm, any- I'm proud to say that I grew up in a fucking generation where we appreciated what video games we had. And they were, they, we they, are, they are basically video games. You know, they... Not what we call a video game today, and I'll use that in, with inverted commas, commas, because there's no innovation in it after these games that we get nowadays. It's all, look at me, me too gaming, as we've mentioned many, many times before. You look at a game from the late 80s, early 90s, even late 90s, they all had a story, they all had decent gameplay mechanics. They actually gave you a reason to play the game, not like... It's it's got Call of Duty on the title. We'll play it that way. It actually the market was also different. so much different. It was so much better yeah. then. Well, I mean, it, it was, was smaller. Yeah, That's the again, thing. and it goes back to the expense. You mm. back then, you you could have a room full of people make a game, and it took three three months to make. Yeah, and they'd bring that to market, and it was like bam. Now it's a team of at least two hundred people, and they're working for three to four years straight. Depending now, obviously that that changes depending on how big the team. Actually, if it were a two hundred person team, it'd probably be about a year and a half to two years. Mm-hmm. But and you're certainly seeing that with like Madden and all these annual fucking games. But it's just it's ridiculous. The, these smaller teams back then. I mean, you got deeper RPGs out of teams of twenty yep. than you if are. That. Out of, 
than you are out of teams of 150 today. Yeah, I mean, look at the past Final Fantasy games. I mean, Final Fantasy VI. Okay, I, I dare people to really compare 13 to Final Fantasy VI. If you even think for even a, a fucking like, second that the 13, which took how many years to come out? Oof. How many fucking years for them to produce that? Yeah. And you, then you wanna, compare it to three? Or, you want to hear sorry, something six? massive? You want to hear something massively depressive? Skyrim, right? Team has got to be like over 100 people, over 150 to somewhere in that range. A lot of people worked on Skyrim. Morrowind, 60 people, if that. 60 people, if yep. that, worked on Morrowind. And that game is much deeper than Skyrim is. It's like, it will just blow your fucking mind. How it, it, And the expense... It's just it goes back to the expense. They're spending all this fucking money on this tech. And then they're like, oh, shit, look at all this money we spent. Now we got to sell more copies of the game, which means we have to cut this feature and that feature and this feature. We got to add in a tutorial. We got it just snowballs. You, you want to know what I would love to see? I swear to you, I, I would I would pay so much to fucking just see this happen. And I can almost guarantee that I, I'm not a betting man, but I can guarantee this would fucking work. It, we'll use Nintendo as a prime example. If Nintendo went and said for a limited time, we are going to bring back the motherfucking NES, the regular Nintendo Entertainment System or Famicom, depending on where the fuck you're at. OK, bring that back for a limited time for like maybe a year and developers can actually make games for it. I'm yeah. talking parts, real fucking carts. And I'm talking like re-release games like Super Mario 1, 2, 3, Metroid, fucking uh, Legend of Zelda, all the other good shit, okay? If they re-release that... No, okay, man. No, no, no. You know what? That's actually a brilliant idea. If they brought back the NES, it would be so cheap to make games for it now. Yep. They could literally get teams of, you know, 15, 20 people to make new NES titles on Yeah, and on think carts. about how many fucking games, like retro games... Yeah. have been made based purely off of like you know nintendo's hardware and uh, look at Mega Man 9 and 10 prime fucking example right there of a major release that could work on a nintendo car i i literally would i would go ape shit over this yeah. and this isn't coming from I, I you know i don't want somebody to say you're just saying that because you grew up in that era no i'm fucking not i am telling you the god honest truth okay because i've taken i i I have family, okay, younger than me, I've sat down and fucking played Nintendo, Super Nintendo 64 and shit like that, stuff that they didn't even get to grow up with and enjoyed the living shit out of it more so sometimes than the stuff that they were, you know, playing currently that's out right now, okay? Yeah. Bring a fucking Nintendo back, okay, with the carts. I'm, I'm talking like a regular a front loader or top loader. I don't give a fuck, okay? Bring that back? Oh, my goodness. Man, yeah. just seeing the stuff. Uh, give me a fucking... Dra give me a Dragon Warrior 5, okay? Uh, you know, uh, bring over some of the games like that. Give me... I don't know. Anything, really. Just something you know, fucking awesome, man. You know, I've got, an, I've got an idea. I've got a theory. A little while back, just about a year ago, a little while after we heard about the Wii U for the very first time at E3 2011, there was a rumor... And I don't know if anybody heard this rumor, but there was a rumor that the Wii U would support DS games. Did anyone hear about that? Yeah, there was. Okay. Now, th th apparently that's not true, or, well, we still don't know what the fucking price is, so who can say? But we do know that it has full USB compatibility and will be able to support uh, external hard drives. We know that, right? Yep. What is to say that there's a bunch of games on backlog at Nintendo that knows, well, no one's going to buy that. That's old. What if the 3D, or what the 3DS, the Wii U had an attachment that worked by way of USB to where you could plug in new 8, 16, 8 and 16 bit games into that drive that were in the same form factor as the Nintendo DS? They could use up all the unused DS cartridges and give us some amazing games that would take no time at all and be real cheap to produce. Mm. Yeah. Reggie, you better be fucking listening. With Somebody. Interesting library. Absolutely, and you know, and you know, it could work, dude. It, it that's the thing. It, it literally could. And and the entire point to this, folks, is that literally hardware doesn't dictate how much 
fun you're going to have with it. I don't care what bells and whistles that you're bringing to the fucking party. Want to know why? Because Sega didn't have that great of a sound chip, but I enjoyed the music on it. Nintendo doesn't have the great of graphics, but I've seen cutscenes in Ninja Gaiden have been blown away. I'm talking about Snatcher, which is on Sega CD, and people think is a piece of shit as a fucking system. All right, it's the games. That's all it boils down to at the end of the fucking day. The games. It's just learning the hardware. There's a little bit of learning. See, that's the problem. So many fucking developers don't want to work with anything, don't want to try something, don't want to take their time. That's why the fucking, all the Wii ports of, you know, multi games look like liquid shit. Oh, why? Yeah. Because these lazy fucks want to be paid to do nothing. Mm-hmm. So, a anyway. quick, easy cash on port. Yeah. That, and, that's, and that's sad. So, you know, that's, uh, what, you were going to say something, St. Magnus? No, I was just agreeing. Oh, well, thank you for agreeing. That's going to have to bring us to the end of the Hate Bit Podcast. This has been a long one. We appreciate you guys sticking around. Um, so at the end of this podcast, I like to beg, please, somebody make some fucking games. I have been Yell Chaos, Sainted Magnus. I've been Sainted Magnus, yes. Bring back some of the old 16 and 8-bit systems. I'd love to see a Mega Drive 4 or even a fucking Super Nintendo 3 or even a NES 3. You know, think about that. So I've yeah. been Sainted Magnus and I shall see you again soon. Raise your fist. And the word of the day is Burmese Python Penis. God fucking speed. <laughs> Alpha Omega Sin. Bring back the NES, and I won't destroy your children and make them into cookies. Nom, 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 nom. And that's been our show. We thank you for joining us. As far as me and my my uh, my feelings, I have to say to Mr. David Jaffe, who put the uh, lifespan on the consoles earlier this week, the only thing I can say about that is since when can weathermen predict the weather, let alone the future? <laughs> you guys have been fabulous. We have been the Hate Bit Podcast. See ya! Bye. Later.